Hello, everyone, and welcome to yet another exciting chapter of A Tale D20 Presents Magpie Madness! Ooh. Avatar <laughs> Legends Korra Era, where four friends journey together to tell a story of mythic proportion. So welcome, welcome, everyone. And... I would like to introduce myself. If you do not know, I am Omar Burgos, aka the Tail Weaver, here at A Tale of D20s. And we are going strong with our month long event of Magpie Madness. And today, as I said, we are playing Avatar Legends. So I am donned in my Avatar Aang cosplay. I have my little Momo here to help. But let me introduce all the other amazing players who will be playing with us today. Starting off with our very own Travis. Why, thank you very much. Uh, <clears throat> I am Travis, otherwise known as Zendarek, your resident wizard and enchanter here on A Tale of D20s. You can catch me playing in our uh, month of Magpie Madness and also uh, GMing as well, too. And I'll be hosting uh, Passions starting Mondays uh, coming up for this Magpie Madness. And uh, today I'll be playing Koja the Razor. Excited awesome. to be here. Awesome, awesome. Excited to have you. Can't wait. And next up we have Sam. Hey there. I'm Sam Hove. I'll be playing Vern the Elder. And I'll be scolding all those young whippersnappers into some good action. Fantastic. And last but certainly not, not least, we have Pete. Hey there, I'm Pete. Um, I uh, have my channel here on Twitch, uh, Kai Moon Raccoon, and I'm here uh, as Harlow the Guardian, uh, hoping to protect our, our uh, band of uh, Earthbenders as we're getting into this uh, exciting story, and I'm really happy to be here. Awesome. Awesome. Some brief announcements before we begin. Of course, we continue our... Uh, month of Magpie on Monday, as Travis had put with uh, Passion de la Passiones, and then we will continue, and then it continues again with Urban Shadows. We have Root. Please check it out at atelier20s.com slash events to see our packed lineup. And I guess that's all for the announcements. So why don't we jump right into tonight's session of Avatar Legends, the Core Era. Cue the intro. So why don't we get started? Previously on Avatar, we had met and had our session zero, where we had found ourselves, and particularly Coda, Harlow, and Vern, arriving to Republic City, a bustling city uh, full of all sorts of characters, technology, sounds, music, and sights to see. But our three band, our, our band of three earthbenders were here for a reason. They were chosen, handpicked specifically by Avatar Korra to investigate a nefarious plan to close the spirit portals, hereby placing Republic City into a strange, unbalanced form. During this, our three had surveyed the town, inspected, and learned that there, were, there was a meeting that night with this anti-spirit faction, and their leader was supposed to make an appearance. So they donned on costumes, porcelain masks, uh, and arrived to hear this spectacle speech by this, uh, this, this foe. 
who went on and explained that he had a tool that would wipe away the spirit world altogether to bring back Republic City to the way it was, its traditional time. Of course, you all know this would upset the balance once again, and our three heroes snuck into the back and found a mystical urn, a vase of sorts, that had some strange spiritual properties. Upon destroying it, they drew the ire of what we had learned to be Kato, a leader from the Northern Water Tribe. He had fought and tried to dispatch our heroes, but luckily Avatar, Korra, and the Republic City Police, led by Chief Beifong, were able to stop him, but not before he, he escaped. It seems that Korra had revealed that he had another plan now that his vase was broken, as he had captured a prodigy waterbender, a spirit bender. And this spirit bender needs to be found before they use, uh, before uh, Kato uses their abilities to snuff out the spirit world once and for all. So, we begin our, we will then begin in the middle of the night. You all have, are currently walking away, battered and bruised from your battle uh, with Kato, but now with this new mission that Korra has given you, this mission to save Republic City, no, the entire world from this anti-spirit faction. You have to find this child prodigy, this Hakan, as they are called, as they are the key to stopping or initiating this plot. Can we start off as you all stand alone? You can hear the waves crashing against the docks as you're now currently within the wharf next to the warehouse. Korra has left as long as well as with the uh, police force as Vern, please describe yourself. Vern is a, a crotchety old man. He's begun to uh, limp in his old age, but he'll swear that it's from an old war injury. Uh, he wears the much more traditional uh, earthbender clothing, a uh, green tunic, and none of this fancy metal stuff. No, not the way it was in the good old days. Uh, he likes to make sure that he is bringing the most traditional, but also a, a stern and helpful approach. Uh, he recognizes that things may not be the way they used to, and maybe he's the one that needs to get up with the times and help out when he can. Uh, and if that means adapting and trying to make this old dog learn new tricks, then so be it. Excellent. And standing next to you, your ally and defender, the Razor Coda. Coda, please describe how you look. Coda is a thick, uh, armed, uh, light-skinned uh, man. He has a big neck, a, a crew cut across the top, and a, a growing beard. He has big arms, a big, thick torso, and legs. He is a uh, trained warrior. He is very strong. He has... Um, uh, onyx or obsidian uh, bangles that he has around both of his arms like bracelets um, and he also incorporates a little of the new age uh, earth bending styles with an iron ball necklace um, around his, uh, his, his throat and he has uh, a brown uh, dark brown with shades of green vest that leads into the traditional sort of um, like MC Hammer pants. I can't think of like the, <laughs> the parachute style. pants. Parachute pants. Like he has bigger parachute pants that sort of allow him to move his legs. Um, he has, you know, sort of this a vest and and uh, flowing clothes because his arms are out and his legs are out. He has sort of a ominous hulking demeanor, and he, um, yeah, that's our, so that's what a coda looks like. Awesome. And next to this hulking razor stands the mighty Halro. 
Please now, describe how you look. Uh, Hauro uh, stands uh, pretty much an average build, wearing like traditional um, uh, garments and um, you know uh, having a short uh, hairstyle, very straightforward disposition, and sort of uh, uh, very stalwart and uh, very even-handed with uh, you know his entire look, and then just uh, faithfully following alongside uh, the other two. Okay. So, now that we are once again together back on the dock, what, where do we want to go next? We have this clue, and Cora had told you to search. Keep your eyes and your ears to the ground and see if you can find out the location of this waterbending prodigy, as most likely they have been taken by the anti-spirit faction. Vern is very steadfast. Well, we'll do our best to find them. And uh, so where can we go next? Uh, and he turns over to someone on the docks. Have you seen a con? They're not gonna know. <laughs> a random passerby goes, I, 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 I'm sorry, no, no. no. And what, what's up with those? With the shattered windows and all the water. I, what is up with the commotion this late hour? Pay you no mind. Don't go there. There's danger. <laughs> we just were curious if you heard of uh, any whereabouts of these treacherous anti-spirit people. That's what's going on there. And as Ko's explaining that to that person, Vern walks over to the next person. Have you seen a con? <laughs> <laughs> eventually has to stop and say we will we should find the right path for first before we ask everybody in the vicinity oh you know great elder <laughs> Halro that's a great idea let's regroup at the tavern I agree okay Vern nods and uh, he would actually if now is an appropriate time for it uh, he would like to use one of his moves. Ooh. And as they were on our way back to the tavern, he was like, you know what? I think my friend lives around here somewhere. So I'd like to use my move around here somewhere. <laughs> 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 when you go looking for help from an old friend in the area who you haven't seen recently, you name them and roll with harmony. On a hit, you find them and they can assist you. On a seven to nine, pick one. And then there's some more details about it. But on a miss, your old enemies were looking for you too. And the GM will tell you how you know they are near. So okay. as we're walking back to the uh, to the uh, the tavern there, I'd like to, like, oh, you know what? I kind of recognize this neighborhood. Maybe, uh, maybe I know a few people around here. <laughs> uh, and that, if that's all right with you, I'd like to make a roll for it. Yeah, go ahead and roll with harmony, please. All right. So I rolled two threes, that puts me at a six, but I have that special, an open heart, which gives me an extra plus one to harmony. So that'll be three total added. So three threes will give me a nine on my result. Nine, okay, so that is a soft hit, but a hit nonetheless. So on a seven to nine, what are your choices with that ability? Uh, I would like to choose, uh, I don't owe them a favor or apology, but they might be caught up in their own problems. Okay, okay. So, you stop and think. You've been to Republic City before at some point, a trip, a visit, and you've made some friends here, old friends. Not on the way to the tavern, yeah, you could certainly stop by. Does this friend have a name? Yeah, uh, it'd be Akon. Akon? Okay. So... And knowing so you remember Akon's nearby, did you want to go there next and tell the group? Or how do you want to proceed? Yeah, I, I'd, I'd see the street, I'd recognize, wait a second. And I think Akon lives over this way. And uh, I did just start walking that way. <laughs> this better be good. Come on, <laughs> let's go. I dash up and uh, hope for the best as we move forward <laughs> in this direction now take a look back and make sure 
no one shady, no masked people are like following us. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds like if you're taking a look back, why don't we have you assess the situation, Coda? All right. Um, and then this is a roll with creativity, please. All right, all right. Ooh, ooh! That's a six and a four, plus one, 11. Oh, nice. Okay, so on a 10 plus, you can choose uh, two of these questions. What can you use here? Or what do you see around you? If there are any threats around you currently, what should you be on the lookout for? Uh, your best way out of this situation? or if there's any great danger. Yeah, I'll say um, uh, who or what is the biggest threat right now? Okay. And looking around, you see a lot of the people have run out. So it, they have spread after seeing that the Republic City Police had crashed the place in this battle with a huge wave that uh, Kato had summoned from the water, revealing he was a waterbender. Uh, there's a bunch of people who are looking at you who you notice, who may have noticed you because your porcelain masks have also broken and you were seen chatting with Korra. Eyes. Uh, right now, the police are, are questioning people and letting them go, but you get the sense that people are staring at you suspiciously. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then oh. I guess what... And I get one more? Yes. Um, what is our best way out after like seeing where Vern is going and we need to make a quick escape. What's our best way out? If you want to be hidden and not followed as you're getting a sense that these people are watching you, you'll probably want to take a side route, not the direct route, kind of move around in the shadows. Cause you get a sense that you might've pissed some people off. Okay. I will take note as we're going down this like main main road that Vern detoured and just keep note of a few of the side alleyways in case we got to dip into them. And uh, as Coda was doing during the session zero, the uh, earth treadmill is an effective way of redirecting uh, Vern while he's on his warpath in a straight line. You can help steer him in a more proper direction. <laughs> so. Sounds like you're going to try to avoid. Now, hearing this from Coda, realizing that you may be being watched. I'm assuming you're all taking side routes in, in around the streets. And the streets aren't very busy, although it is not extremely late in the evening. It's still nighttime as you're able to dive and duck into certain alleyways. Oh, I see what you're saying. So I'll... I'll um just mentioned to Vern, we shouldn't go directly to your friend's house. We don't want to bring any danger. So let's, and we'll snake, snake there. You know, he'll mm -hmm. know where that person's house is since we're in the area, but we'll take a sneaky path. Yeah. Is that what you good. mean? Don't need to bring any extra attention. Mm -hmm. Vern's okay. distrustful of all this uh, sneaking around, but he'll humor you youngins. Along the way, like in the alleyway, can we like take off the mask and like cloak to then look like regular people in the town? I would say it's the mask would probably have been damaged within that fight with him, but the cloak you could totally take off. Okay, yeah. Mm, yeah. Because you were speaking with Cora, she, she just wouldn't know who you were. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just so that way, like, we don't, like, we're not like cultists walking around a town. You know what I mean? Like, we're trying to like slip yeah. into the alleyway and then blend back in. <laughs> oh, yeah. Totally. Okay. Totally. Okay. Does anything happen as we go down this alleyway? Or is it a, now that you've taken a safe path and that danger that would have came up may be avoided, does anything else happen? Or do we safely make it to um, Akon, Akon? Yeah, Akon's uh, house. Uh, Fern trudges forward. Uh, as long as there's no other threats, he'd like to just go up and knock on the door. Okay, no threats, okay. So we'll say that it's a safe travel, thanks to Coda's keen eye. As you go through the building and the, and the, uh, and the side streets, you cross over and finally see a small little hut uh, stacked next to some tall buildings. You know that this is a Khan's abode uh, with a little metal door and a buzzer, what it seems, to, to alert people, uh, to alert him of, of uh, visitors. 
pun. All right. I'll go ahead and uh, I'll, I'll ring the buzzer then. All right. <laughs> Almost like a uh, jolt of electricity. Um, you can hear it buzzing on the inside. And is uh, is he elderly like you? Young? Or she? Or they? I'd say that she's very young. Uh, it would be surprising to the other two that that I even have ever met someone uh, that outside of the city that we grew up in specifically. But uh, the fact that it is such a young person means that I've been here more recently than they would know. Okay. So, and you you hear uh, um one moment, one moment, please uh, hold on, uh, and then you hear locks being unlatched, and the door opens up, and then you see uh, this young woman standing there uh, with a floral dress, uh, pink and um, and red, uh, as if her hair is tied in a bun, and as if she had either just head out or or just about to head out or had just came back in from a night out you're not sure as she goes and looks at you all can, can i help you what Vern? Vern, is that Come you on. Oh. i'll step forward and i'll just pat her on the head like oh <laughs> uh, but she is like two feet taller than me so i had to reach up to do it and uh how are you oh my goodness it is so great to see you how much you've grown Oh, it's been so many years. Ah, oh, you, you're just as dashing as you've always been. Oh, shoot. <laughs> uh, Khan, these are my trustworthy companions. And I would say students, yes, these youngsters. It's Akoda and uh, Carlo. Carlo. Well, well, welcome, to, uh, welcome to this wonderful place and with this wonderful person. <laughs> uh, very ple uh, great pleasure to meet your acquaintance. Oh, pleasure to meet you, Hollow. We should step inside. We may have been followed. <laughs> um, we can do pleasant trees when we're safe. Followed? What? All right, get in. Come in. Come inside. Come inside. Vern nods uh, very solemnly. I'm afraid that we're here on Avatar business. You know, when uh, you're as official and important as we are, that... Some of these things tend to happen. Uh, and he'll uh, look over to Akan and kind of get more conspiratorial. And he'll say, so we've heard that there's some nefarious sorts. Cato. Are you familiar with the name? Cato. Mm, yeah, yes. Cato is, is one of the council members at the Northern Water Tribe. I mean, he... He arrived in the city about a few days ago. I'm not sure why. Why do you ask? After some excellent stealth reconnaissance on our part, uh, we were able to determine that uh, Cato is actually working with uh, this nefarious organization against the spirit realm. They're trying to close a portal and stop the spirits from coming here to Republic City. And to do so, we thwarted one of their uh, mystical relics. But they have found a protege, a, a small woman named her, a small person named Hakan. And we're trying our best to help them out and bring back uh, this, this individual. That's putting it nicely. We got our work cut out for us. This person's in danger. And it's probably because of us. And I, you see him look away. And uh, Vern would like to console uh, Koda. And uh, at this point, is there a way that I can uh, sort of lend a helping hand? Is there a specific move for trying to console someone or make them not feel the grievances that they currently do? Oh, sure. You can comfort, you can, uh, what's the word? guide and comfort someone usually they are damaged in some way but also for the role-playing sense you can go ahead and see if you can calm down their emotions by rolling with harmony please all right let's give it a go i just got two earth symbols which i believe are the sixes so nice uh, that's plus three so i got a 15. <laughs> 15. and this is to uh coda Yes, Dakota to comfort them, even though nothing's actually wrong gameplay-wise. <laughs> really yeah. glad I used that role on this. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, he did say we were hurt from the battle. In True. Our oh, yeah, yeah so. there we go. Well, yeah. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> so on a hit, you can, uh, they choose, so Coda, you can choose to embrace the guiding comfort, and you can clear any fatigue, uh, um, clear two fatigue, and you may ask uh, one question. They must answer honestly. So, I said, sorry. So, uh, Vern, you can ask Coda one question who has to uh, answer honestly. Or, Coda, you can shut him down uh, and then inflict a um, fatigue or condition onto the elder. Um, on a nap. Like, it feels like a nat 20, a double sixes, <laughs> is absolutely embrace. Embrace the guidance uh, and comfort, and I'll say, and then I get to uh, ask a question in return, right? Um, no, no, no. Um, Vern gets to ask a question of you. Oh, oh, okay, oh, yeah. Okay. Sure, sure, gotcha. sure. Uh, so as I'm there, I, I hear this, this negative rhetoric coming from Coda, and uh, the, the self-doubt almost about our intentions and the outcome of our of our actions and i'll turn to coda and I'll, I'll just kind of do that that elderly pat on the shoulder i'll say coda i understand your frustration but is it really our fault ask yourself this if we hadn't stepped in would the end result have been any better that's hard burn I appreciate, appreciate your wisdom, but it feels like it's our fault, but they could have unleashed a catastrophe and strategically thinking, I guess, having a single target to retrieve is better than cleaning up a mess of hundreds or thousands. This is hard, but probably the best route forward. Or we took the best route we could. And, uh, we did the best with the information we had. Right. Halro uh, interjects that we we sometimes take the harder path, but we, we know that we can pull together and succeed. Okay. So, it sounds like that also because you got a 12, you can shift his balance. Now it sounds like you might, so the razor is torn between control and connection. It sounds to me that you're heating that connection and connecting him with the rest of the team. Oh yeah. So if you want sure. to, you can shift him towards connection. Is this something that Coda would embrace? Uh, Cause Vern's not in any sort of, uh, he's never one to be pushy with the inner workings of his fellow, uh, of his fellow compatriots. So, if he thinks that Coda would be open to it, he would like to move them towards connection. Yeah, I think um, Coda has been like a hard like razor for the, the group for a long time. And so he's been very controlling and very restricted, but the three of us have been really like a really close tight triangle and our connections are growing and would be receptive to shifting more towards balance. Okay. Indeed. Mm -hmm. Right. After the emotional exchange, you all see this glimmer of a tear forming in the corner of his eye, but he sucks it back up in. And uh, <laughs> no, no, no time for that. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, um, I can't believe that that the councilman would would resort to these tactics. Now, I, I have heard this anti-spirit rhetoric by the spirit takers, I believe they're called. But I didn't think that he would be involved. And then spirit takers, how rich. All they're taking are poor innocent children. Um hold on, I think I might have I think I, I might have hold on. And she runs to to the to the back. Um she comes back with a book and starts flipping through pages. And so finally stopping at one. Uh, yeah, here, here. Um, I work uh, a lot in the city records. I mean, if it would be of help, I could maybe give you the location of his office, if that helps. Vern nods, thankfully, looks to the group. Says, 
Are we up for some breaking and entering? I will go wherever we are needed. I'll walk over to Halro and put my hand on his shoulder and I'll say, with you as my shield, we will pierce these enemies and Vern as our leader, this is a battle. We will fight and we will win. Vern nods very, Indeed. very seriously because he didn't see you put your hand on uh, Halro's shoulder. He thought you were telling Vern that he was also the shield and the leader. <laughs> yes, it's a heavy burden being multiple yes. roles for the group. <laughs> so much, this illustrious career. So. Yep, yeah. exactly. <laughs> uh, now that he's done bolstering himself up and showing off for uh, this extra person, he goes back to his old crotchety ways. And he's like, Is there any tea or anything around here I could get? I'm, I'm absolutely parched. Oh, yeah, certainly. I, I, I can get you some tea if you would like. I mean, it's late. I would love people. some tea too. Oh, that would no, be no, fantastic. No. That would I be could lovely. never impose. Let me make it. Let me make it. Uh, um, <laughs> he just bustles over into her kitchen and begins to try to whip up something, but doesn't know where everything is. So he's just throwing doors open. And... Over there. Uh, uh, no, no. Uh, watch, watch, watch the. Uh, and it's like a whole bunch of pots and pan fall down on top of you. Uh, oh no. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, and then you I, find everything. Great. Uh, whips up the tea, thanks her profusely, uh, and then after making such a mess uh, and enjoying some beverages on the, her dime, uh, he, he tragically walks out, uh, thinking that he did a favor for everyone. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you all, after having your tea, leave uh, Akon as she waves goodbye, looking around to, to see because you said you mentioned being followed before closing her door and locking all the latches once again. For Shana, be safe out there. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'll swing by again soon. She nods. Thank you for your hospitality, ma'am. She smiles at all of you. Gives you another wave before closing up. Okay. So now we find ourselves on the streets of Republic City. It's getting rather late right now. So usually those that are up at this hour are up to no good as you begin to, I mean, are you heading towards that location she gave you or somewhere else? I think uh, Vern kind of will reside himself back and say, hey, look, you two seem to know more about this whole criminal enterprise situation we seem to be getting ourselves into. I'm not one for stealth or sneaking, so I'll be... I'll give way to your lead on this one, youngins. He sort of hangs back in, in a rare show of restraint for himself and uh, takes the lets these two uh, take their lead and give him a little lesson in a quieter approach. <laughs> okay. So, are we? Where are we? So, where are we heading next? Or where do we want to head next? I should say. It was an office building they told us about, right? Yes. Is it in like downtown area? Is it like a secluded office? What do we do right we in the in the state right in the uh, center city of Republic City? Hmm. I could go for some uh, downtown treats. How you feel about that, boys? Absolutely, we could. I don't see why we if we would only get more information if we could just see uh, what they have to offer around uh, those districts for sure. It's uh, getting kind of late and I think uh, if my memory serves me, we might be going through some rough territory. So trudge this way and you see him sort of like pull his like uh, vest open a little bit, show a little bit more like burliness and sort of like so, like like lumber as I walk through to like make it seem like I'm like a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. And I will pound my fists together and create the uh, <laughs> rolling earth for Vern to be <laughs> right on my right on my heel. In an effort to learn how the kids do it these days, Vern mimics everything Coda is doing. <laughs> Opens up his tunic a little bit more, saunters, and just 
literally bean pole bent over way goes like this and you see a little cloud of go up instead of a, a thump like happened when Coda did it. Yeah. Not wanting to be left behind, Halro does the same. And just <laughs> follows it up from the rear to make sure that yeah, we're we're all doing it in sequence too. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> got it, got it. Alright. So you start to make your way as uh, nonchalantly as you can uh, throughout the town, having the Razor Coder kind of puff up his chest and make it look more intimidating as you walk through. There are some alleyways as you step through. And as you do, uh, you peer at the side of your eye, just some figures closing in. Hmm. As you walk further, they also walk forward. As you turn around, they dash to the back, hiding behind buildings. Until, <laughs> until finally, as you step forward, coming around as you're walking through this alleyway with two large buildings between on each side of you, uh, you see three figures behind you pop up and then three figures in front of you, closing you off. As one... Uh, gentleman walks forward uh, wearing what looks to be a black and red vest with a matching pants um, a long goatee uh, and a knife and I should say and a glove in his hand that sparks with electricity well 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 who's walking through triple triad territory <laughs> an old man and some half wits <laughs> well if you're gonna walk through my town you're gonna have to pay the toll. Isn't that right? And you see everyone else kind of crack their knuckles and prepare for some type of altercation. I'd like to try to step in and uh, persuade this PC NPC to uh, go otherwise. Also, now look here. The triple triad has stumbled upon a big old heap of triple trouble. I'm afraid that you don't know who you're dealing with, youngin. And I'll excuse this uh, aggression for the mistakes of a begotten youth. But please, for the sake of you and the health of all of your friends here, let's not start this. So if I could, plead with an NPC. Hmm. I would say, are you pleading or are you intimidating? Oh, okay, yeah, I'd be down for intimidating as well. I, as I uh, try to intimidate them, and I, I'm still, my chest is open and kind of uh, bulging out a little bit there, they can clearly tell that I am not that intimidating. <laughs> so <laughs> I'll be rolling with minus one to passion. <laughs> yes, please, roll with passion. All right. I rolled a one and a two, oh, so my God. total is two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, old oh man, you're quite the scare. And he steps forward, and now they're closing in even more tight, so they're more of an advantaged position. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it one more time: handle over all your coin, or all things are gonna get a little shocking. Pss, pss, as his glove begins to spark up, I would like to step forward and say. You tr uh, pushing pushing Vern back a little bit, and and as if I'm talking, he'd be like, "You tried, Vern. These uh, boys might need uh, their heads knocked in, and uh, I'm gonna give you one more chance. And I'm gonna sort of like uh, straighten my vest and uh, showcase my obsidian bracelets, and uh, make sure uh, start like sort of like a like like I'm flicking them like rosary beads, like these giant obsidian rocks." Um, to show, like, I'm not, I'm ready to fucking throw down, and I will actually like to try and intimidate them, also, even though I'm not good at passion. <laughs> I've got yeah, to ask, I, when you did this, did it actually pop your fingers? Yes, I did. Oh my goodness, <laughs> I was like, that was really cool. Where do you get that sound effect? <laughs> <laughs> so go ahead and roll with passion, please. Uh, actually, can I say, I'm trying to control this situation and control our group and use my control instead of passion. Ah, yes. So um, you are using a balance feature where you're trying mm. to live up to one of your principles. So you're living up to control, and I do think that. So go ahead and roll with uh, control, please. So I will get a plus one instead of a minus one. <laughs> nice. Yeah. 
Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, that is a six and a three, plus one is 10. 10, nice. So that is a hard success. So you can choose, um, they can, they run to escape or get back up. They back down, but keep watch. They give in with a few stipulations or they attack you, but off balance. And I will give them a uh, condition. And it says on a 10 plus, I yeah, pick you... and then you pick one they cannot choose. Um, mm -hmm. right? Yes. So I, I do not want them to attack us. So I'll choose the, they cannot attack us. And I would like if they back down, but keep watch. Okay. What are they? Or if that's the right way, I'm sorry if I don't, if I did it. No, right. no, no, it's fine. No, no, no. So you pick one. Um, so you basically, you pick one that they can't choose. And then I have to pick between them. I'm sorry. I misspoke. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Fine, that, so, was my, that was my misspeak. I'm sorry. So then I'll pick the, they attack you off balance is the, no, they can't have that one. And uh, the options would be they run to run and escape and get back up. They back down or watch, or they give extra stipulations. So you'll choose one of those. Is that how I rate it? Yes. Hmm. I was going to choose the attack you, but now <laughs> <laughs> I want to be so intimidating oh. that they really don't want to attack now. Nice. They Cause look I want at... to throw down later. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they look at you like, uh, hey, boss. Hey, boss. One of the other people say, I, I don't know. They're dressed like earthbenders, and I don't like how this one's cracking his knuckles. I don't think I we can handle this one. I start spinning some obsidian in my hand. <laughs> oh, there we go. Uh, <laughs> all right, look. We don't want any trouble here. We'll let you go with a warning. Next time, you better have some coin. Triple triad, fan out. And they quickly <laughs> run away as you are way too intimidating and they're fearing as you you work the rocks with your earth bending. None of them seem to be benders and are afraid of you. Uh, Vern thinks that was 100% him. <laughs> 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 okay. Our sheer intimidation factor was yeah. through the roof. Come on, let's go. You we don't want any more trouble. You quickly make it out of the alleyway before going down for about 15 minute walk until you find yourself in the middle of Republic City. There are still some vehicles, long uh, automobiles uh, that are driving around any, oh, any the like last night, uh, the last call. Um, picking up people or people are driving their own vehicles around. As you can see, a very tall building uh, with like uh, written on top as the like city square uh, or the council house where you can go and perhaps find out the office of where Cato uh, resides. Awesome. The doors are locked though, as it is after hours. Um... But it's... What do you wish to do? Uh, what happens it's, next? It's unlocked, but it's after hours. No, is it, they are locked. They are locked. Okay. Yeah. So there's nobody else around, uh, security or a soul in sight anywhere. Why don't you assess the situation for me, Halro, mm -hmm. and roll with creativity, please? All right. Let's go for that. Uh, that's a ten. So my creativity is a minus one making it a nine i guess okay and if uh, anyone wants to make it so give that plus one to make it a critical success or a hard success you can go ahead and take one fatigue and perform help if you wanted to yeah Vern's up for doing that okay. okay i can't do it for myself i guess no you cannot okay Vern looks around and will tap him on the shoulder and kind of point over that way and help uh help him assess <laughs> some, oh, some of the situation here yeah Okay, so you can choose what here you can use or what's the biggest threat, what you should be on the lookout for, what's your best way in or out, or what is your greatest danger? Two out of those. Uh, I suppose the greatest danger would be the most uh, applicable right now. So I'll start with that. Okay. 
you look up and through using the aid of Vern, uh, pointing out certain things as there are, it's a glass window, so you can still see through. And you notice that there are flashlights, or to say not flashlights, there are uh, illuminations as oh. two firebending guards are walking in there, <sighs> holding out their hands, just scanning the area before going back into other rooms. Seems like it may be guarded on the inside. Yeah, that's a pretty big threat, all right. Uh, I guess, and I have one other option to look into. Mm -hmm. Um, Probably, what would be the best way out from this building, I guess? So you continue to peruse and inspect the entirety of the building. You notice that there is an escape hatch, like a, uh, a, uh, what do you call those? Fire escape. If you perhaps were to, you might even be able to get in there. You're not sure, but it would be the best way out. Uh, Fire escape. Okay, then. Seems appropriate, given the security. You boys want to do the one, two, three pillar? (laughs) Oh, boy. We haven't done that one in a while, but I think so. Vern nods enthusiastically. (laughs) Um, Let's, uh... Okay. Uh... Vern. Oh no, my camera. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. We right. made it up. He did it. <laughs> no, Ver- Vern. Vern, you be you be one. Uh, Harrow, uh, Harrow, you're you're three. I'll be two. And I sort of picture us making like one, two, three, like pillars for us to jump, and then like the fire escape, sort of like on the second story. And so we can like, bu- like use our. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like stepping stones, <laughs> like one, two, three. <laughs> yep. do, do, do. All right, perfect. Okay, so that, that, works. that sounds like you're relying on your skills and training. Why don't I have all three of you, since you're doing this, uh, this skill, this move uh, together, roll with focus. Okay. Oh, good. Focus. All right. Five. Vern got barely a seven. Rolled a six, but I have plus one to focus. <laughs> uh, plus two for focus, so seven for me, too. And I have rolled a nine plus three is 11. Right. Nice. Nine, 10, 11, right. 12. 12. 12. <laughs> okay. 12. There okay. it is. As long as it's above 10, we don't care. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I'm going to say this. You go ahead and uh, do form the filler and start increasing your elevation as you one, two, three, do this move that you both, that all three of you have done several times before in your journeys. As you make it up, though, I would say that there is a consequence for two of you not getting a perfect roll. Hmm. You can mark one fatigue or accept the consequence, but I'll let you know what the consequence is. So Mm. it may, you be making, it it could be slight noisy and you're not sure. There is a glass window there. Perhaps your bending ends up shattering that window could alert the guards. You can, one of you can Mm. take a fatigue. One of you, those of you who did not roll a 10 or higher or accept that consequence and see what happens. I will take a fatigue for that because uh, I feel like this is a time for it. Okay. So you push even harder. You realize as you're getting up, uh, Halro, you can see that there's a window and your earth bending is causing seismic activity. As it shakes mm. a, a little bit, you focus and strain your earth bending until you're able to solidify and the building stops moving. And you have a pillar leading up to the escape, the fire escape, where you can perhaps see the door is unlocked. Yeah. Or the window. <laughs> All right, okay. perfect. Okay. So we can say you all make your way up there. Are you going to attempt to go through this window? I thought it was a fire escape. Is there not like a door that we could, like a fire door we could get into? Well, yeah, yeah, it's like a yeah, a fire. Door. It's like it's like a it's like a lease of like a window, like a large window escape. Like you can step through. Like open it. Like yeah, yeah. We'll yeah, try yeah. to open open it and see if we can climb through this escape. Okay. Yeah, okay. I think we should. Try keep to watch as Coda is uh, <laughs> throwing the window open. We took all this effort to get up here. This door better be open. I don't want to break any glass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait. Um. Reasonable success so far. 
Halro, what did you um what did you roll uh, again on that skills and training? Uh seven. Okay, all right, so never mind. Um one thing since you roll so much on your assess the situation, you get a plus one going forward on anything to do with this getting into the building. But I would only oh. bring you to an eight. Oh, cool. <laughs> so there we go. Probably not uh, that big of a difference. <laughs> no, same thing. Um mm. But yes, the door, is, the window is unlocked as you slide it open. It's a large window. You can, it's made for people to get out in the case of fire uh, yeah. or any type of hazards as you can easily sneak inside this large, uh, this large corporate building. Right. We're in. Come on, let's find this office and see where he's, see if he has any notes on where he's keeping the, the kid. Anything we can unturn here. Okay. Vern just does his best to be quiet. He sees a lot of things he's discontent with, and he wants to make a comment, but he won't. <laughs> you can see him forcibly keeping his mouth shut. <laughs> turn, turn what, Halro? Uh, it was just to see. We'll, we'll we'll leave nothing unturned, is what I was trying to say. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I would say a stone, but we're inside a building, so. <laughs> okay, I think we, like, I picture us, we, like, came through, like, a window. We're, like, in a hallway. We got to find the office, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're, like, on the mm -hmm. second story, and the guards are on, like, the first story. So we might be above. Well, or... you saw the guards were going up and down. So oh, the so they could, could be around. Yeah, yeah, they could okay. be on any floor. Okay, so after As they're the... using their flames, are they projecting a red cone in front of them with the, the firelight? Yeah, I wish... Yeah. be able to see that. Can we crouch to detect their... <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, yeah, you can... No need to make any rolls for that. You can see that there is a uh, patrol every so often going up and down the stairs. And this is about... This building's about three stories tall. So you're in the middle tier of this. Um, the inside, it's, it's um, very beautiful. There are... Uh, frescoes of different bending abilities all on the walls mm -hmm. and there are flags or banners of each of the four nations along the walls as well showing that this is kind of like a world trade center of sorts mm -hmm. um, there are many offices along the along the walls as well uh, and a staircase leading up to the third and down to the first floor as you see going up the staircase to your floor is a fire bender that and then continues walking up to the next floor. After he like passes, I'll we'll slowly close the window back down <laughs> and be like, "We need to look for the waterbender uh, offices. Keep an eye out." Yeah. I'm so tempted to say, "Burn turns and you says what?" <laughs> but I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> Fern has at least that much wherewithal. <laughs> we remind him every once in a while to almost to go like hush. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you start to search for this door. And where do we say? Do we want to say we find it somewhere? Is it booby trap perhaps? Who knows? What do we want to happen next? Oh yeah, there's gotta be a booby trap. This guy knows he's up to no good. There's no way he's letting someone just walk into his office. Yeah, so it's not just leaving it to a couple of firebenders. That can't just be it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I would UN say that we go as high though? as possible. Mm. Even if it's information that could lead to something that could uh, really expose them for whatever it is they're getting tied up with. Yeah. Okay. okay. Well, we know that there's at least one guard upstairs. Do we? Are there any rooms in this immediate where we are that we could check before going up that flight of stairs? Yeah, let's be thorough. Sure. We can say that there are several rooms, and they are labeled by their nation, showing that's probably where the diplomats go from each nation when they arrive here. You do see a water bending one at the door is locked this could be it you're not sure hmm i'll signal to halvro and Vern to that that's the water tribe door and i'll sort of look to the staircase to keep an eye on the mm -hmm. the light okay um, in this situation could i use the uh eat dirt even the smallest pebble can cause a gator fin to stumble to try to make that one pebble hit a weak point on the door and have it fall in. 
Sure, uh, we totally can. So nice. you go. Does it have any cost, or you just that's just your straight move? Uh, it's a move. It's a, uh, an evade and observe. So it is a combat move. So I, as long as that's okay to still use, you can still use them outside of combat. Okay. It says cause a foe to lose their footing. Uh, your target is impaired and unable to choose, defend, and maneuver in the next exchange. But I don't know if there's a cost. Okay, so I'll say for this one, that's relying on your skills and training as you're trying to augment that ability. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and roll with focus. All right. Okay, I got two fives, but I believe I have a minus one in focus. So, no, I have a plus one in focus. So that'll put me at 11. Nice. So no consequence as the door, as you go ahead and, uh, yeah, describe how you open this door with your earthbending, please. Okay. Um, as I... As I stand there and I see the door, scratch my head, look around a little bit, and I'll have that trusty pebble hold it up and as it shoots forward and it hits one of the hinges, hits another hinge, and then taps the door handle and all three kind of ding, ding, ding. And it begins to fall. Uh, but as it's falling towards me, uh, Vern's like hoping one of the other guys will catch it because uh, yeah. Vern's not quite ready for a door to land Just... on him. Kind of very quickly from the side, pull him over so it doesn't, you know, fall in his path there. And I'll, I'll grab the door then. If okay. Alro yeah. grabs, yeah. I'll have two hands over, and then um, Coda can get the door. Right there. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> the three amigos working perfectly in unison. Right. Awesome. Breaking in through this building. <laughs> I'll, I'll... I'll pull the like door like back like on its hinge so they can like sneak in and then I'll try and do that Set myself. Set it back and, up again. And then yeah. sort of prop it up, yeah. <laughs> All right. Perfect. <laughs> Seamless. Yeah. This this uh, uh Larry Curl and Mo uh, <laughs> go the very imagined tiptoeing through. tiptoeing through, not a sound made as <laughs> you're <laughs> Perfect execution. Yeah. Perfectly executed. That's why we're here. That's why Cora trusts us so much. Yes, yes. <laughs> the most professional <laughs> of thieves. <laughs> we'll say inside you find yourself uh, in this office, the carpet, uh, like a red carpet on the bottom, but along the walls are all blue insignias of what you recognize of the Northern Water Tribe. Uh, you can, according to I spit the... in their direction. <laughs> <laughs> After recognizing it. Uh, this is, is the room. Know, Are you an anti-water triber? <laughs> uh, because of him, he's like, yeah. not not like, a, in this moment, I'm like heated against waterbenders because of him, but not generally. Not generally. There's a uh, new deep-seated hatred for waterbenders in Dakota now. Just, <laughs> I'm a bad man. <laughs> um... Excellent. So you, um, uh, after going uh, spinning on the carpet around, just like in disgust of this of this room, you do look around, and yeah, this is the room described to you uh, by Akon, uh, as she d d uh, display or explain how this is where the diplomat would arrive. There's a desk here as well, uh, as well as a shelf full of books. And in a large window uh, that's being blocked by two curtains of the same colorings as the uh, the wall itself. Mm. Uh, Vern will shake his head at how tacky those curtains are. And he'll go over and inspect them to see if there's anything he can do to make them look a little better. <laughs> Perhaps you can twist and turn, tie into a yeah. nice knot. <laughs> Is that a window behind you? <laughs> Is there a full window behind you, Vern? Behind those curtains? Uh, that's I, I, I go to as I'm as I'm looking to see how I can redecorate them. I'm I'm, I'm moving the curtains and then kind of look out and see what is actually behind them. Oh yes, it is a window behind it completely, All right. uh, overlooking the well. It's two stories up, but you can see a good view of uh, the center city of Republic City. Mm. He'll kind of shake his head like, ah, no trees, no good view. Oh my goodness! <laughs> how does anyone okay. work here? Yeah, yeah. This is the place. Let's fan out. And I would like to assess the situation and try and find documents uh, or anything that specifically has Kato's name on it. Sure. Go ahead and roll creativity, please. All right. Ooh, uh, three and a four is seven plus 
one, so eight. Eight, okay. So you get to ask one question. All right, let's make a count. Um, let's see. What here can I use to find records of Hakan? Hmm. Or what here can I use to find Kato's records or plans? Like, is there a, a journal or a notebook or like a diagram or? You look around and you notice that there is a locked compartment on the in the desk itself. You try to pull it, doesn't seem to let you through. Perhaps it's in there. Perhaps. Uh, I will. Un impatiently, like this door's locked. How do I open this door for me? Uh, yeah, I just have him step aside very gently and just say, There has you know, we don't have to approach everything so intensely, so quickly. You just need to take your time and see if, and then he pulls on it really, really hard. And then nothing, and then uh, just sort of. Shrugs his shoulders and looks around like, any other ideas? Uh, Vern sees these two clattering away and uh, just not even looking. He will try to throw the pebble again and have it hit the lock. <laughs> sure, sure. Um, so you're looking at the uh, at the desk itself in this little drawer there and uh, seeing it's locked and you're all pulling it. And all of a sudden, shh, the rock flies over from <laughs> Vern and hits it as it, psh, uh, I wouldn't say it shatters open but it breaks the lock itself causing the compartment to open wow. up could it be that yeah. it breaks the leg of the desk the desk then falls and then the drawer opens out <laughs> oh because... the drawer just falls on its own sure. i i love that because what i was gonna go for after this, so as you go ahead and break the table uh, causing a large noise you hear what was that <laughs> as there's nothing up here here. here there's nothing going on no, it's just... it's true it's fine situation normal <laughs> Fuck, I thought that would work. It worked one time before. Just as this, like, enormous noise and then causing all of this to happen, I'm thinking, wow, the smallest uh, pebble can 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 get us uh, where we need to go. But but with not without uh, much clamor, it seems, also. What, what do we say? The smallest ripple can make... Uh, the smallest rock can make the biggest ripple. Right. <laughs> there you go. Right. Perfect. Uh, can we pull out like whatever journal or object is in that drawer? Yeah, there is a journal yeah. inside uh, with uh, like a ledger of sorts with this paperwork and other interesting information. But as you go ahead and grab it, the door is, I wouldn't say busted open, the door was already broken. So <laughs> <laughs> they go to open the door and it just falls in. <laughs> hey, we just put that back. Hey, stop uh, there. <sighs> as two firebenders ignite their hands and stands in front of you, these guards, yeah. as they go, stop right there, with their hands out, ready to punch and release a torrent of flames. Uh, what do you do? Uh, well, the jig is up, so maybe we gotta fight our way out of this. Um, would you say we safely have those objects, like, in our bag, yeah. possession, etc.? Okay. Mm -hmm. Um... Uh, uh, I think that I would immediately go into ground shift, twist the ground itself to displace and unbalance foes, uh, target an individual or an area. If you target an area, mark one fatigue. Hmm. Okay. So what are you, who, what are you targeting? I would like to target all the, and, and is it one firebender or is it a group of them? Two firebenders. Two firebenders. I'd like to target both of those firebenders and, uh, it, is it a, if it's a concrete floor? I'd like to spin it so that they kind of sink down into the concrete there. <laughs> got it. Got it. Okay. Um, and you don't have to say you have to mark fatigue or no for this one. I do. Yes. So because I'm attacking that area, that doorway, I'll mark one fatigue, and uh, all affected foes become impaired for an exchange. Okay, so we're not quite, we're in an exchange, but we're not quite in an exchange. We'll get more on that later. Oh, okay. <laughs> but no, no, this still counts. I'm just saying we'll go more into okay. what exactly an exchange changes later. But we're going to do this in uh, flow time, real time okay. flow. 
as you go ahead and perform the motion, and they get stuck into the ground, and they they struggle. Uh, in that motion, they are going to retaliate. They still have their arms, or how uh, or the arms free, but they're stuck as one of them uh, actually releases a blast of flames out of their mouth, and the other punches out, uh, shooting over at. Uh, I would say you who grabbed the ledger. Okay, Coda. So these blasts are coming towards you and towards Vern themselves. How do you respond? I would look at Halro to defend me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd be stepping in as soon as I could. Yeah. Okay. Can I do that now? Or yeah, I'll, right I, would, would I would respond by shouting out, SHIELD! I would just, yeah. Throw it down, no matter. Yeah, everyone knows we're here. I just throw out shield, real like, real loud, right as it's about to reach them, and then, yeah, hopefully pull up an earth shield. Sure, sure. You go ahead and uh, stomp, uh, uh, bringing up the earth shield, blocking the uh, the attack from actually. Roll, yeah. I mean, uh, relying on your skills and training. Let's see how successful. Okay. If not, they may take a fatigue from the blast. Ooh, okay. I like that. Seven plus which modifier? Uh, that is roll with focus. Uh, plus two, so that's nine. Nine. Does anybody want to take a fatigue to possibly uh, bring that to a ten? Could affect um, your fatigue anyway. So. Yeah, I'll take a, I'll take a fatigue for that. Okay. All righty. How do you assist to make that a full 10? Um, knowing that it was coming towards me and I was uh, impromptu, like, quick calling for it, I would have smashed my, um, like, uh, hard stomped on the ground and started to uh, pull up the concrete in a, like, the opposite, like a mirrored fashion from Halro. So we, we sort of have, like, a double layer. Mm. Okay, okay. So you completely block the torrent of flames that are coming that could have inflicted a, a condition, so I might say not a fatigue. So um, mm -hmm. it could have done a condition onto you, but you were able to block it using the help of the razor, uh, Halro. And in doing so, you, you, you yeah. uh, can feel the heat, and all that's, the only thing that's behind you now is just that large window. Uh. All right, if Vern could step in. Uh, he would like to use his coordination technique. Uh, so the group the group sets it up itself up uh, to launch a concerted effort, a skilled attack upon its targets next exchange. So if we could, I'd like to just all of us shoot some kind of like once some one person breaks the window, I can do that with the rock, and then the other yeah. two create those step stools to get us down again. Yeah. Would oh that yeah. Work for a, a coordinated for uh, technique stones. here. Mm-hmm. Okay. And uh, the one from the building it, itself, like out, and then yeah, like going use the building itself there. to like do yeah. doof and like make right. layers out. But the yeah. second part is the group becomes prepared and favored and make clear to fatigue. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, so it's a, it's a group technique. So now for a group technique, it, that only takes my turn, not everyone's, because it seems like a lot is going on. <laughs> is that... Yeah, for in this case right now, you only have to worry about. Um, because right now we're not doing turns. You only oh, are okay. kind of out of battle, so you don't have to worry you about gotcha. that. If uh, yeah. Coda, like it, it feels like Coda has like a sort of like plan, like code names, and I did not plan that. That's just a comment <laughs> to me for like certain things. Uh -huh. So like this one to be like a uh, he'll he'll be like a uh, Operation Slide, go Vern Point, <laughs> and then you like break the window with your pebble, and then yeah. we'll make the first I like go the down, put it yeah. Put it oh, out well, from the window, and then he'll put out the second one right after. Should we clear the two fatigue, or is that something that should happen only in a, a combat situation? Oh, no, you can clear the two fatigue. Yeah. Okay, cool. And I think that happens for everyone. All right. I had one, so I will take one off. Thank you. Same. Awesome. Well, I guess this is a question for gameplay in general. When it says uh, the group may clear two fatigue, is that in all... Two fatigue gets removed, or each is of them is that a month or yeah? Oh, so I'll tell you two things. I'm slightly bending the rules because I like the group techniques. Uh, group techniques oh, okay. are mostly mm -hmm. used for NPCs as a group, and then there, if there's like five firebenders, they will use a group technique. Oh. But I do like that 
players <laughs> have that ability and I do allow it and bending it for especially because this is a one shot so you can have all that because they're cool and I am always about okay. the rule of cool uh, yeah. but yes raw rules is written they're technically for groups of NPCs I'm, but, I'm I'm fine with like using my turn to like be part of this group initiative yeah like and we've been working together for so long that we can almost think that this is this is the strat we're gonna put this out right now and then we can all move in unison i like uh, that that's cool after um Vern shatters the the glass halro how do you bend like d can you describe how you bend your pillar uh maybe using the uh the siding of the the window or anything to like kind of slope downward so that we can like ease into the other platform and then it would kind of you know cover a little bit of uh of ourselves going down so that we can get you know down two floors yes like oh i love that <laughs> i'll follow i'll follow your lead then and see as Vern yeah, opens. where it ends and where you have to put down yours so that where we can I'll slide pull, down a little bit further. I'll pull more of the building down into it so right. it creates this sort of like bricked slide sort of like yeah. like, a, like a literal fun slide off of the right. side of this it's building. Like, a fun slide so treacherous, it would be a from lot of the waterbender's office. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. I love it. I love it. So the glass right. shatters as the earthbenders are trying, I mean the earthbenders, the firebenders are trying to get themselves out of this impairment as you create this uh, array of abilities and techniques and make the steps as you all then run out, making your way down. How, <laughs> and how is Vern? I know he's old. How is he getting down as well? Uh, he hobbles over to it and as he goes to like make a cool jump slide down it, he just kind of turtles onto his back and is <laughs> Hands up in the air. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> uh, yeah. As you all in this uh, multitude on this formation of rocks that you pulled from the ground itself. So, unfortunately, earthbending is not the most um, stealthy of abilities <laughs> as the not earth quite. itself gets pulled <laughs> up and tsh, a loud noise as you slide down. You hear. <laughs> as alarms uh, go off uh, as you slide down and start to make your way out from the scene, carrying this uh, evidence, uh, this this clue to find uh, possibly the uh, water bending prodigy and the way to stop the nefarious Kato. And with that, we're going to take a quick break. And go we're going to go to commercial break. <laughs> yes! Perfect. Yeah. That was, that was awesome. That's hard. Yeah, awesome. So we'll be back in just about 10 minutes or so, so stay tuned with the second half of Avatar Legends. See you in a bit.
and we are back. So, welcome back, everyone. Let's okay. remove the bookmark and continue our tale. One moment. Drama, epic suspense. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting all my ducks in a row. So, but last we left off, you had broken out of the uh, like the United Nations building. Uh, we're able to get a ledger from Cato, as he was actually a diplomat from the Northern Water Tribe, but you were caught, or at least your presence was known, as you narrowly escaped through a window using your advanced bending techniques, and now you are on the run, I guess you could say, hiding from the alarms that now uh, you start to see members of the uh, Republic City Police Department using their metal bending to kind of uh, uh, zip across uh, and like fly almost Spider-Man style uh, to the scene of the crime as they are now inspecting the building. Yeah, zip lining. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so, with the ledger in hand, what happens next? Oh, uh, it's not safe here. Neither we gotta. Are we we gotta make a break. Yeah hightail it out of town or as far from here as we can until we can figure out where to go next do we have a place to stay for the night or do we need to just like run from the police and then check into a hotel <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, i think that <laughs> no searches nothing um maybe um gm can you remind us we republic city we're not from here we're from the earth nation place so is there like an earth nation embassy perhaps we could go to like a like this is like the un all but is there like a earth nations representative building we could go like yeah. potentially hide in sure <laughs> the earth kingdom yeah okay. yes the earth kingdom's embassy that's, that's a fine place to go yes we hightail it over there okay so you make your way through uh, the shadows, hearing the alarm and the alerts, uh, until finally, after about 20 minutes of just ducking and dodging uh, in this late evening, you see what looks to be a uh, a large building uh, shaped almost like a cathedral in a sense, uh, with white alabaster-like stone exterior, steps that reach up, um, and large doors, all uh, architecture that is... Uh, synonymous to the Earth Kingdom. You see the green uh, banners down with the circular, with a circle-like uh, stone symbol in the, in the middle of it uh, before making your way up. And it's unlocked. There's always someone in here, it seems. Burn will hobble over to the counter. Hello there. <laughs> We've had quite the evening, and uh, I was hoping for a place to just relax and get some respite with a good old fashioned earth bed. Do you have one of those around here that we could uh, stay in? All right, coming answering the door, you see is a skinny gentleman um, with a stubble for beard and white hair, uh, older, uh, but probably not as elder as, <laughs> as Vern. <laughs> um, but, uh, why, yes, yes, are, are you looking up and down a senior garb? Are you refugees from the Earth Kingdom needing a place to stay? Uh, yes, Vern's exactly. about to go into a lengthy explanation of, no, 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 we're here on a seat. But as he starts to say that, the wiser among the group stop him. <laughs> yes, <Yeah>. yes. <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, yeah, yes, we, we, we humbly uh, request your aid, and I'll offer a proper Earth yeah, bow. Right, mm. as does Halro, as where you've rushed to... Uh you know, our, our home country's uh, place in such a rush that we try to offer uh, gracious uh, if, if we're allowed entry. Okay. So it sounds like you're trying to trick this NPC. <laughs> so uh, one of, any one of you, uh, since you're all in on it, you can uh, roll with uh, creativity. Uh -huh. 
and see if you're able to trick this NPC. But I'll leave it up to you on who does that roll. Um, <laughs> I'm also wondering if I could I use suspicious mind. On, Ooh, what does that person? do? Uh, so when I I can watch a person carefully to figure them out, roll for focus, and then uh, uh, so on and so forth. I, I I can I do that to this particular NPC? Sure. Um, but what is the what do you get out of it? Here, let me actually uh, be if, if they're telling the truth, what their their true feelings are, uh, what they really want right now, what they're worried about. Perhaps uh, mm -hmm. they had heard about the commotion and thought that the Earth King uh, Kingdom uh, was involved. So I want to see if he's truly an ally. Ah, then yes, go right ahead. Roll okay. with focus. So I roll with focus, uh, which is plus two. Come on. Ooh, 11 plus two is 13. So yeah. 13. Oh, certainly. You, and you kind of look and start looking him up and now sizing him up. And you get the sense that this is a normal worker here at the embassy nothing up his sleeves he seems definitely suspicious of who you are especially this late evening but you get a sense that he has his own inclinations on what brought you here i see i i turn over to uh to Vern and dakota and just whisper that things seem to be all right for now all right. so who wants to roll that trick <laughs> That might change <laughs> depending on the role. Ooh, I have right. a. I have to say, there's nothing more suspicious than, than asking three people, like looking at them, and one of them goes, "Yeah, everything's okay. Don't worry, guys." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm sure he's fine. I'm sure that we we look very trustworthy. Of course, okay. Um, I have a plus one. What What do you have, Vern? Uh, Vern, Vern's not part of the gimmick. Uh, he, he was ready to spill his guts. So, uh, <laughs> okay, he, I'll, yeah, I'll too honest. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Seven. Seven. All right, cool. Okay. Uh, hey, better than nothing, man. Better than nothing. <laughs> I know. Uh, I rolled yeah. a five and a one plus one. Okay, all right. Mm. So go ahead and pick one of these. This NPC will stumble. Uh, in some way uh, will stumble and you take plus one on any actions against them. <laughs> um, uh, there, They can act foolishly and I will explain to you how they act foolishly um, or they overcommit, aka they are deceived, which probably is the one that you wish yes. to do. Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 Okay. Okay. Oh, um, uh, of course, after uh, after what happened with Kuvira and the fall of the Earth Queen, I, we've gotten a lot of prejudice against uh, Earth Nation, uh, the Earth Kingdom. So I understand if you don't have a place to stay here in Republic City, yes, come on in, come on in. Shame, shame, shame. And he opens the door, letting you in, closing it behind you. Fantastic. We'll follow him to the room, to a, a room that he gives us, and then... Oh. And then go right into that journal. <laughs> right, time Perfect. is of the essence, essence, perhaps. Okay, he puts you into a room. The room is well furnished and beautiful, with all types of stylings of the Earth Kingdom. You have plush velvet seats uh, and uh, bunk beds where you can all sleep on. There's about four in total, so an extra one and a desk, of course. As we were making our way through the building, was there like an, an earth shrine or like a place of like worship to like pause for a moment? Um, not really. Was a, I mean, there wouldn't be like a worship. There will be a because they are a um, like an honor, like an a spot to honor the the homeland. Yes, yes. I'm gonna say that, that you can find. You definitely can find a place where you can honor the the earth uh, nobility as they they are like a. A caste system. Yeah, so we should offer a short uh, offering. I'd like to go there and offer a short offering, and then also put like a few coins, mm -hmm. like or some incense or something to like represent. Right. Thanks for this. Burn um, nods earnestly. I'm glad to see I taught you well. I'm glad. Yes. yes. <laughs> and then uh, and then and then and then book it to the room and read through the book. <laughs> got it. Got Complete, it. Complete. We run back up there. Yeah. Yeah. You go into the room as the uh, attendant closes behind you. Let me know if you need anything. Closing it behind as you're in the room and you immediately open up the book. 
what do we find in this book that will help us uh, find where um, Hakan is as well as Kato? What do we think will be in it? I think it was all of the special benders and were like, uh, he was like keeping tabs of them, not just water benders, Mm -hmm. but all like the special like um, prodigy children or anomalous and, that have come up. And, and that's yeah, the, fir- that's the first issue later. Yeah, that's like the first part of the clue I think we find. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you begin to read through the book and get a list of names and descriptions, as well as abilities uh, on earth uh, earthbenders who can uh, bend even the toughest of metals, like platinum doesn't have any impurities in it, but you find a bender who can bend platinum. Uh, in the Earth King, which is amongst Earthbenders impossible. Uh, you find uh, notes on Firebenders who are able to bend uh, like the um, the energy itself out of different objects, let's say, and then pull them. And then you also happen to find one about a spirit bender, a bending mm. child who is able to augment the spirits and the energy of the spirits as well. And that has circled. We'll say maybe even a location in it. Vern this nod. must be it. Yeah, Vern nods concernedly and says, we should also tell Cora that they know of these other, uh, these other prodigies. This could be very troubling indeed. Solving yeah. one problem may lead to others. Mm-hmm. It's not just the interest in this one, although this is the most pressing one at the moment. Um, <clears throat> absolutely. And I will pull out um, some paper amongst the desks that are here, and I will start to, like, transfer some of this, like, vital information onto another piece of paper as we read through it. And Or I'll pass the <clears throat> the quill to <clears throat> Halro. Come on, scribble this down as we, as I, as I call it out. And uh-huh. we'll have him highlight the most important like names and a few places because obviously yeah. we're going to keep this book or right you know. if we have to uh relinquish it somewhere we can, or if we get separated or whatever would happen we'll have the record of it so i take a lead pencil and i jot everything down that i can Vern um, squints his eyes goes, ah very wise very wise this way we can return the book and they'll be none the wiser <laughs> <laughs> Good one, Vern. Oh man, yeah. that's <laughs> our you... Vern. Yeah. Do they have any tea? Do they have any hot water for tea in this room? <laughs> oh my god, I needed, I need a, a beverage. At this point, we this. realize how tired and how long the night has been. To this yeah. point, so yeah, I look for tea as well. All right. Okay. Uh, yeah. Some place where you get some tea and you do their beverages able for you to drink. I think we're getting the sillies as we like figure out all the details in this book, and then we might just pass that on these bunk beds. Yeah. Do we or can we find more information in the book? Yeah, you find a location, as well as a date and time, and the date and time seems to be around this time tomorrow. Something that you were that was hinted by Cato uh, during the uh, mm. uh, the exciting incident. Mm. All right, I think we. Have our have our next uh, point in place. Perhaps we just now need to prepare. And I'll like fold the book up, toss it over to Halro. Thanks for scribbling. Oh, of course. Uh, but we should be wary that he's aware of us now, and we can be sure that he'll be waiting for us at the same time. So we have to be aware of that as well. Mm mm. <laughs> Mm. Uh, he's, starting to, he's starting to agree and and also fall asleep a little bit. Yeah, taking more notes and then just slowly just his, sort of he falls dropping his head and then yeah, he pull- dropping the pencil and be like, perhaps we've had enough excitement for one night, and we should recollect ourselves in the morning. I think I could sleep like a rock. <laughs> I could. Yeah. All right. <laughs> So after learning this information and finding out where your next steps lie, you all can easily go to sleep for the evening. 
safely. You can hear the barkings of the dog still searching uh, around <laughs> in the neighborhood, right. in the neighborhood right. looking for pursuit. Those. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but they did not discover your location. That's because Vern sprinkled cinnamon from the tea around the room so that the dogs can't sniff us out. <laughs> uh, Great. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> the, the, the polar dog, the polar bear dogs. Yeah. Oh my just... goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but they did not find you. So we will say that morning comes and any fatigue that in condition, well, conditions will still stay, but any fatigue you have washes off and you can clear all those fatigues now all right all right burn stretches and pops and snaps and cracks all throughout his old joints <laughs> mm -hmm. you hear a knock at the door in the morning yes this is in the morning yeah. you're waking up burn uh, pops back up Shuffles over to the door and answers it. I reach out for him to maybe not answer it right away, but then say it's probably <laughs> go ahead. Uh, open up then that uh, that same attendant standing there, though kind of shuffling back and forth and sweating a little bit. Um, I have a uh, um, we we have breakfast downstairs for you. Um, if you wish to come down and eat. And uh, seeing the way this guy's shuffling around, um, hmm, I'm uh, I'm tempted to plead with this NPC to try to uh, get some more information. Uh, I want to say like, hey, what's really going on? As I see the nervousness, I, I want to have a, I'll have a good conversation with this uh, with this individual. Like, oh, is everything all right? And uh, I'll offer them support if there is something happening. Go ahead and roll with harmony, please. As you attempt to plead with the NPC. All right. I rolled a one and a two, but I have the plus three from my uh, special harmony bonus there. So I'm at a six. Is Anyone? that, is you need a seven? Yep. I am, uh, Coda will um, come out of bed or like uh, rush out of bed and hear what Vern is doing and realize maybe like we might need cover and will run up and do like a uh, prostrate myself next to him on the ground. Like, please, please, we are doing, <laughs> we are doing Cora's work and, yeah. and, and really just offer that extra help. And I'll take a fatigue as I trip out of bed and stumble and, <laughs> and hit myself to like really like uh, get there. Uh, after realizing it, yeah, Halro re uh, does the same uh, taking a fatigue as well to follow suit on his, on his other side. Okay. So that raises, oh, so um, are you both helping or just one? I don't I know if it... one person needs to take the fatigue, yeah. but both can do the oh, same action. Okay, yeah. both. Are, yeah, I want yeah. both do the same action. Okay, got it. And you are taking the fatigue, uh, Coda. I'll take the fatigue. Yeah, cool. got All right. it. All right. So, on a seven to nine, you see that that he's stand. So he's standing there. Um, uh, and he looks like he wants to say something, but he looks back behind him. I um. Uh, and it seems like he might need something more, something more from you. Vern kind of looks at them discerningly and goes, we are on a mission of our own right now. And our goal is to help a young individual that is being held against their will. I hope that you'll help us in this. He stands there looking at you, looking back again. Um... I'll, I'll sort of say from a prostrated state, it's a mess. It's a mission from Korra herself. The Avatar Korra? The Avatar Korra. If my words lie, stone me to death. Oh, damn. <laughs> it's not, it's a hundred percent true. So that's why I can say it with such <laughs> conviction. Stone me here and, and bind me if, if my words lie. He looks back one more time, steps in and closes the door. 
There, there are strange people down there, too. Of them, I've never recognized them. They say that they are special agents of the, of the police force. But w I familiarize myself with the entire uh, regimen of the Republic City Police, and I don't recognize them. And nor do I know of any special task force. They seem very pushy. And I don't know. They just gave me the heebie-jeebies. They said they wanted to speak with you. They even threatened me. I. I don't want any trouble, but I don't know. I don't know what to do. I'm so sorry. Are there others here? No, Is it's it just, just, just them. Well, here, oh, here. Um, well, there are other uh, refugees who are staying on other floors, yes. Do you, no, are there other, like, uh, clergy or caretakers or... Oh, it's just there... me here it's... today. How, okay. They are not safe people. No. You can't trust the police, no matter how long you've known them, because of you well, had encounters like, with them once before. It sounds like these aren't the actual police either. Uh, he, the, this clerk is familiar with all of the police, is what they're saying. So uh, these two are pretending to be officers, but may not be. Uh, would we have connections among the police force to send real police here? and confront them while we continue with our actual endeavor? Or do we feel in this situation that staying and making sure that these refugees and this clerk uh, are safe, the easiest way to do that would be for us to confront these individuals? Uh, hmm. Yes. Um, if you, do you think this confrontation is going to lead to battle? I. Burns I okay know. with a battle, but the, uh, the delay in saving uh, this this prodigy, that would be Vern's biggest worry. Mm. Well, we have a place to be tonight. So it's suspicious that these people are here now. So either we need to avoid them or subdue them is what I think. Okay. I agree. I think... We could yeah. potentially lure them into a trap. This is our kingdom's land. Right. And these people have been gracious enough to allow us in as members of the same community. And we have to return the favor as well as protect them. Agreed. I will uh, turn to uh, this gentleman and say, we are from the Earth Kingdom and we are your allies. We will act as your backup. Do you wish us to expel these foes or or what? What do I, you want us to do? I don't want any trouble at all. I honestly I don't want to sell you out, especially being Earth Kingdom uh refugees, but I mean what you said you have to say and you're with the Avatar. I, I don't want any trouble. There are other refugees here and I don't want them caught up in anything. If you do anything, just not here. Vern nods. He walks over to the, the outer wall, and he'd like to move it with, uh, with an earth bending. Just have it slide open as if it were a doorway. Mm -hmm. Step outside, and then he'll start making his way around to the front to just stand at the outside of the entrance and call out to these two and make them leave the place so the fight can happen in the street. Okay. <laughs> The wall goes down. You can easily bring it back up. No seam un, uh, uh, seam seen as you're. Well, I want to leave it open in case my, my allies oh. will follow me. <laughs> I don't want to lock them we back in. We step through and... too, just yet. <laughs> yeah. I, I I will totally fight in the alleyway or in the outside. But as, as you are pulling down the wall to go out, kind of ask: Is there a courtyard? Well, that there's... we could lure them into. Ooh, I like that. Hmm. And I'm saying this only because I have the lore as a special fighting technique. So we can, uh, like, if we have a place, I can, like, get them off balance and mm -hmm. maybe... And we can But only if them. there's, like, yeah, and strike them, but, like, if there's a courtyard. But, like, because I know, like, the Earth Kingdom generally has, like, a perimeter deal. But, like, mm -hmm. if they have, like, a, you know, earthen courtyard away from, like, the, you know, building. And you know what I mean? Like, yeah. in old-timey, like, castles had, like, a... Courtyard. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's nowhere near that big, but there is a backyard. It's still kind of close to the building, though. 
And you see, at mentioning this, he looks a little nervous. You can go ahead and plead with him if you want to see if he will allow you access to that. I will, I will, I will plead with him. Please let us use the, this land. It will provide us the most advantage and prevent them from hurting others or uh, possibly getting away and notifying the villains we're trying to thwart. Please, please. And that is not good at all. That is a five. Plus what? Oh. <laughs> uh, this is a roll with harmony. Yeah. Oh. Uh, minus one, four. Oh, no. <laughs> oh. oh. Ooh. Well. Looks like we're doing this in the middle of the street. In the middle of the street. <laughs> He's like, get out. <laughs> I need you to step out. <laughs> <laughs> Did I stutter? He's like, <laughs> I, he's like I've done enough. <laughs> Please, can... No, not here. I don't want the, any chance that any of our refugees could get in danger or the building destroyed. If you're going to do some type of tussle, just just take it far from here, please. I will put my hands on his, like my giant hands on his shoulders, like as if I was going to intimidate. And then I will say, thank you for all that you have done. And and bow. Right. And uh, uh, no. Offer respect as well. Offer respect. No, no. Come back, no fight. Burn nods solemnly, thanks them for the tea, <laughs> and says, oh, there might be a bit of a mess in the kitchen. Sorry about that. <laughs> and trundles his way outside the wall. <laughs> <laughs> um, are you, so you said that you wanted to, Vern, go out there and greet and like, and see from this elevated standpoint the, them, or are you talking to them? Yeah, yeah. So just pull them away from the refugees outside of the earth uh, embankment there and just pull them right out into the open so that if they're trying anything underhanded or anything like that, uh, the real police can get called. Yeah. Okay. You go ahead and grab their, so go ahead and grab their attention as they are there. You look over and I kind of like through like a balcony, you can see them standing right at the steps, uh, waiting impatiently. They definitely are dressed actually by looking at it, similarly to how um, when Cato had his mask on, that same type of suit. Mm, okay. Uh, and what do I need to roll something specifically, or do I just need to greet them and... Uh... Oh, no, yeah, go ahead and greet them. Okay. Vern will stand there in the middle of the street, and he'll kind of crack uh, and snap a little bit as he's still waking up from the morning. And he goes, hey, you youngsters, the kind gentleman in there has asked you to get off his lawn, and I suggest that you abide by his request. Otherwise, we may need to make you. Okay, that sounds very intimidating. <laughs> <laughs> go, That's ahead intimidation. And, yeah, go ahead and roll with passion, please. Poor Vern. <laughs> he seems to constantly be using the skills he's worst with. <laughs> Oh, no. He's a I rolled a four minus one. <laughs> oh. So Bert got a three in intimidation yet again. The, it's pretty um, early in the day. It's just it's hard for him to get going. The one suited <laughs> individual. The one suited individual looks up. Uh, it looks to be a woman uh, with a kind of a pony, a black ponytail hair, uh, as she stares up at you. Huh. Well, how about you come down here? We have some questions for you and your friends. Uh, there was a break-in at the at the United Nations, and we'd like to talk to you. I believe there's three of you, right? Can you meet us down here? Because we're not going anywhere. Oh, Most people so, have to so, come up and get you. Well, we're we're outside right now. Oh, you went down uh, to the, oh to meet yeah. them face to face. Oh, I thought you yeah, were looking yeah, down yeah. at them. No, yeah, no, no, no. Where no, yeah. we went outside, we thought I thought that they were still inside. So I'm trying to lure them away from the other refugees. Uh, so I'm trying to get them to come outside of the building. Um, I and think leave, uh, the you, you like bended the wall down, right? And yeah, then we yeah. like walked out wow. and, and walked out yeah. and around and then basically have called them down from the staircase from the yeah. front of the building. Oh, yeah. I got you. So, I got you. Yeah. But yeah. in my in my way of like showing force to let them know we have the upper hand, uh, not the case. <laughs> and they're very aware <laughs> that there is no intimidation coming from her. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> But okay, so if you're all there, then they find they'll turn around and walk their way out and meet you. <laughs> Regardless, they are aware of your presence as they leave the building. Hey, so uh, we have some questions for you, old man. You and your friends there. 
Why don't you come with us quietly? No, you uh. can ask your questions right here. <laughs> also, pause. Can I can I rewind just like thirty seconds or like two minutes and hand the old man the extra Ooh. one of the copies? Maybe we made two. Um, and hand him one of the copies and be like, right. Cor Cora's hands only. Yeah, get this straight to her. And it like has like a earthen seal on it. Okay, of the oh, so you made a copy of the book. Yeah, like not, like, yeah. The, yeah. like the, with the, with the yeah, notes like that I took also. Yeah, I made like a yeah, like a, a we we took like a pretty shortened good, version of uh, it just so yeah, that yeah, she yeah. could see. Yeah. Yes, yes, I yes. Like that. We That's made good. made a separate cliff notes, and then this is a, a cliff notes of the cliff notes that we handed the dude right. to. Us. And we know she can figure it out because mm -hmm. we're yes. on the case. Got it. Yeah, totally. And he does <laughs> take it, but he and nervously. And, and then we and then we leave and then okay and then yeah. and then yeah no ask your questions here. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're gonna ask our questions at the station, says the other uh, gentleman there, as they seem to get into uh, fighting stands. Uh, w the woman pulls o up from a small little pond nearby. Uh, uh, water whips that floor around, flourish around their body, her body, and the gentleman uh, steps, doosh, doosh, and as he does, rocks appear up and circle around his arms as they go, now you're going to come quietly, or does things need to get rough? Uh, Vern kind of steps forward. It's like, it seems that we are not seeing eye to eye on what needs to happen here and now. If you start a kerfuffle, I'm quite convinced that you may or may not be who you say you are. But we are exactly who we say we are. And we're the kind of people that can stick it out in a tussle. And oh boy, I've seen my share of tussles. So right now, I'd like to plead with you to de-escalate this situation, young lady. <laughs> So, uh, he's trying to plead for peace with these NPCs in one last ditch effort to avoid beating them up. Because Vern is confident that we are going to take them in this fight. Go ahead and roll with harmony, please. Now, whether that confidence is well placed, we'll find out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have a seven rolled, but I get the plus three from my super special harmony. So, that's a ten. Okay. okay. Very nice. Hmm. Can I add something to make this a little bit easier? Sure. Um, is was it Captain Bofong? Bayfong. Bayfong. She we know is with Cora and is good. And there's yeah. probably some bad cops. Yes. So I'm gonna shout out. Um, Bayfong has to bring us in herself and, uh, uh, she, you know, like call out like her name or maybe use her title better to make them know that like we know her. And maybe mm. that might give one of them pause to think that they're doing the wrong, like, like, oh shit. Okay. <laughs> I like that. Is there anything uh, in the, in the street or along the side there, like a bench that uh, Vern can go over and sit down in if he feels like he swayed them to at least pause combat right now? Um, they don't get into a... Uh, they they close their stances and okay. the water just kind of goes and just flops around her arm like re ready ready to be used and the rocks fall down as they dust themselves off. So at that point, uh, I, we're kind of in two stances right here. They're up uh, leaving the building and we're in the middle of the street. Between us, I would assume there might be some sort of bench or something facing away from the two people. Uh, Vern would like to go and sit down on that bench and then pat the seat next to him. Like, Let's all sit down and have a nice conversation. So he's now facing with his back to them and has asked them to sit down at the bench with him. They walk down uh, with no so of uh, hostility, uh, but still, but they walk over and they don't sit, but they stand in front of you. Well, I don't want to hurt you, old man. Look, you may know Beifong, but what you don't know is that we're from a different jurisdiction. Beifong holds no right over us. 
we're not actually from Republic City. We're from what you can call it where we allied ourselves with the world air nomads who go around uh, bringing peace. Yeah, peace. That's it. And with so Beifong has no aware of this and she's handling things on her own because you uh, there was an attack on the United Nations. That's that means we have to step in. I'm glad that you don't want to attack, so you can just come with us, and they do place, she does place her hand on your shoulder. Just come with us, old man, with your friends, and we'll talk peacefully down in our offices. Um, as she does, could I put the, the pebble and kind of file it to a point and move it to my shoulder as I see her going to put her hand down on it? So she just kind of like... <laughs> Pokes her finger a little bit. Like a thumbtack. <laughs> like a thumbtack. Yeah. Sure. Right. Ow! <laughs> and then quickly move the pebble away. <laughs> <laughs> oh, are you all right, miss? Listen, listen. I understand. You have places to be. Oh, young people always in such a hurry. But we do too, unfortunately. Now I have quite a bit of time under my belt. And I've always learned that things... We don't always go the way we want them to exactly. But with a little bit of patience, we can always find a common middle ground. So, how about we discuss what you want to now, unless you're not actually the one looking to ask us any questions. Is that the case? They look at each other, uh, eyeing each other, as the, uh, uh, the gentleman goes, All right. I've had enough of this. We tried it your way. But now, as he said, talking to the woman, we tried it your way, but Master Cato wants them, and he wants them now. And they once again go into their stances as we will now enter into an exchange. Perfect. All right, so Vern's sitting on a bench, <laughs> ready to start the fight. Right. <laughs> okay, so the way exchanges works, it's a little different. It's a little rock, paper, scissory, and you'll see exactly how that is. But let's do it step by step. So first, you have to choose an approach, how you're going to step into this battle. There are three types of approaches that you can do. There's defend and maneuver. So this is where you can kind of defend yourself. So if you were to get hit by something, you can dodge it or reflect it back. Then there's advance and attack. If you advance and attack, that means you step up and now you're engaged with them and you can go ahead and start dealing damage with your abilities. And lastly, there's evade and observe. Evade and observe is where you kind of look and judge and react after you see how everyone moves. Now. There is no initiative in like the way it works in other games where you roll a die. Instead, defend and maneuver always goes first. And as the and and, and as all if all of you pick the same maneuver, then you get to choose who goes first. It's totally up to you. And you will always go before the NPCs. Um, then then after the defend and maneuver, uh, it's advance and attack. Finally, evade and observe. So you have no idea what I'm going to pick for the NPCs. But you can discuss amongst yourselves what you want to pick for that. Now, once you do that, you can. there are several abilities that you can use that fall underneath that category. For instance, I will list them off. Uh, if you choose the advance and attack approach, you have the ability to use the strike move. Uh, and striking is your basic attack. It'll allow you to, you have to, you basically be punching, throwing, using your bending, and they, they will take two fatigue or mark a condition or shift their balance away from the center. It is their choice. Now, you can do something called hammering blows, which is you take one fatigue, and instead you, you force them to do one of them. So instead of them picking, you choose to, for them to mark two fatigue or inflict a condition. 
Um, and so, and if you have the book in front of you or the PDF, you'll find that on page 156 uh, to see all the different abilities that you can do uh, with each of them. But of course, you can choose what you want, and I'll explain the options that you have, just to make sure is, uh, it's expedited. Mm -hmm. Now, you also have your moves and your own abilities that will allow you to, uh, that you can use in this battle. And then it will tell you in your moves when you can do them. Like if it says evade and observe, you could do it then, and so on and so forth. So, but that is not all. And I just want to make sure that I am wording this correctly. Ah, here it is. So, when you choose if your, uh, your approach, you then have to make a roll. If you defend and maneuver, you roll with focus. If you do advance and attack, you roll with passion. And if you do evade and observe, you roll with creativity or harmony. Your choice. So, on a 7 to a 9, you get to use one basic or one mastered technique. So you all have chosen mastered techniques prior. So you can use one of those or any of your basic techniques, which are the techniques that are, like I said, you can hammer, you can um, strike, so on and so forth, uh, according to the stance you've taken. Um, or you can use one practice technique, which none of you have. We are, for this case, you only have uh, that your master techniques. Or you can choose two basic or mastered techniques to do. You can't choose the same one twice, though. All right. Okay. So, on a 10, um, I'm sorry, I misspoke a little bit. On a 7 to 9, you can just use one basic, one mastered. On a 10 plus, you can do the other ones I said, which is use one fatigue to use a learn technique, which you don't have one practice technique which you don't have so in this case you, you if you roll a 10 or higher you could do two basic techniques or two basic master techniques and i like to because i'm not entirely sure on the rules of this i allow you to do one basic and one mastered if that's what you want and you can split cool. it up so does that make sense to anyone does anyone have any specific questions on any of the stance moves no that's pretty good yeah i think we'll roll through it all right yeah. so you are all now, so you, the two of them, they look like powerful benders, are in between the two of you. Or well, I just say no, they're close to uh, Vern, and the two of you, Halro and Coda, are further back on the street. Now, there's no movements. You will just go straight up to them and can attack if you want. But what approach do you wish to bring to this battle? I can guarantee that uh, Vern is bringing evade and observe. <laughs> That's his tactic. I'm going to do a defend and maneuver. I'm also going to do a defend and maneuver. Okay. All righty then. So for those of you doing defend and maneuver, you will go first. So is your choice who goes first? I think that would be the attacker of the two of us. So, um, so because um, they're so close to Vern... I'm going to try and use my special uh, fighting technique called lure. And you put a foe off. Oh, I got to roll first, right? Yeah, yeah. First, you go ahead and a roll uh, with focus, please. With focus. Let's see. That's a six plus three is nine plus three more is 12. Nice. So you get to choose two basic techniques, two mastered or one in the other. I will take a, is your fighting technique a, a basic or is it a mastered? Yeah, the, yeah, that's a mastered. The ones that you chose for the earthbending, those okay. are all master techniques. No, oh, it's one that I got, but it's still mastered. Yes, yes. And I get, you, you said I get one of them and, and that's, and one basic too? Or two mastered if you have another one or two basics, it's up to you. Maybe okay. And the basics are for your defender maneuver, just so you know, you can use the ready, the retaliate or the seize of position. And I can explain which ones they are if you need to. Okay, so um, I'm going to first start off with lore, and then I'll switch over to the other basic, but I might switch them uh, depending on if I need to, one's better. But the lore ability says you put a foe off balance by luring them in. And so you uh, name a foe you lure. And I'm going to say, hey, who was the one that was touching him? Which bender was that? The water that bender? That was a water bender, yes. I'm going to say, hey, water bender, 
get your mitts off of him. Come fight me and try and lure them in. If they don't attempt to inflict a fatigue, a condition, balance shift, negative status uh, on me at the end of the exchange, they must mark two fatigue. So they have to fight me, and if they don't, then they get two fatigue. Um, if they don't uh, attempt to harm me, or if they do attempt to harm me, I become favored in our next exchange. Okay. Hmm. And then my... I'll take the ready, I guess, and it says... Or no, I'll take the um, retaliate. Steal yourself for their blows. Each time a foe inflicts fatigue or condition or shifts your balance, I get to afflict one on them. So I'm going to lure them in and then get ready to, like... Uh, I'm going to... I'm going to onyx bide. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. So you go ahead and, and uh, steal yourself, spitting out those words, and we'll see if she responds i'll i'll sort of bend down and like grab some of the earth and it will sort of start to like um the other bender had like rocks that were like levitating and i'm like Ugh. i like spit in his direction and the way i bend the earth is it sort of gets like like it's like a uh, muddy starts to get like thick got it got it so after that display halro you also chose that uh, uh that um approach what do you wish to mm -hmm. do uh, I want to move up, and as I'm defending, I want to um, try to use uh, uh, stand strong, uh, and then if I I don't know in conjunction or after if I could use uh, rock armor. Well, let's see. Go ahead and roll with focus. Okay, rolling with focus. Nine? Nine plus anything or nine total? Um, focus. Oh, plus two, so 11. Nice. So you get yeah. to choose two basic or two mastered or one in the other. Uh, probably want to do basic, I guess. Maybe two basics to, to start. Sure. So your basics that you have are ready retaliate and seize a position now i can uh, let you know what each of them are uh unless I probably, you have a move i can probably guess what retaliate does but uh what does ready do exactly so mark one fatigue to ready yourself or your environment assigning or clearing a fictional appropriate status of nearby characters or yourself so you don't so right now no one currently has a status so you may not need to ready yourself okay. um but if you do ready yourself and something were to happen, like you were to get impaired, like yeah. let's say he ra he traps you in rocks, you can instead escape out of it because you have readied yourself. Okay. Uh, I think I would, yeah, like to do yeah. that and then uh, uh, and, set a retaliate also. Okay. And also seize for position, if you wish to know, is that you move to a new location. So you can technically uh, disengage from this foe so they can't damage you. Um, uh, and okay. then, um, so therefore, they do like a global effect type of ability. You won't be uh, in it if you want to do see. that. I see. Okay. Well, I'm here to maybe take the hit, so I'm going to, yeah, stand firm. Perfect. So you stand firm as the guardian that you are, shielding yourself, preparing you and your allies from, ta from anything, and then retaliate, ready to strike back if needed. They, the waterbender, she turns around and looks at you. Huh. So you think you're something, huh? Well, I guess you'll have to learn the hard way. As she has taken, they both have taken the attack. <laughs> and the, wow. the attack. Yeah. So they go Chose second. The right one, then. Mm -hmm. So she will, hmm. She's going to use her water whip and whip it around you and attempt to impair you. Uh, you and give you the impaired um, condition on, on top of you, um, Coda. But you have retaliated, correct? I do. Does she just do it? Or do I, yeah. do I get to fight against it? Oh, no. She, it, it just happens. So oh, Okay. Um, so if they inflicts a fatigue, a condition, or shifts my balance, I get to inflict one fatigue back on her. As a, 
her water whips around me, I'll like to pull some of that like mud up into her water and like and like it like hurts her for for like bending impure water or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's extra tiring to keep it's it. Tiring to yeah. keep yeah. it, yeah. <laughs> That's good. Yes, as she whips you and drags you and like kind of impairs you for a moment, you also feel the effects uh, of the uh, constriction of her water whip. So you still take that condition and you can apply the appropriate condition if it makes you angry, if it makes you afraid, but you do get a condition on this ability. Oh, I do get a condition. Okay, I am, I am not afraid. I am angry. Okay. <laughs> You are angry, so you take the appropriate negative to that until that condition is cleared. But she takes one fatigue as you launch back out, striking her. She goes, Ugh! get him, as the firebender looks on over to you as well. And also chose, they both chose the same uh, approach. And we'll go after, kind of leave you alone, uh, Vern. They don't find you to be a threat and instead, we'll go ahead and just do a fire bending punch, stepping onto the ground uh, towards uh, Coda again. This is a strike. So instead, so you will take. Let's see. Also, what does. Um, I'm now favored, or sorry, I will be favored on my next turn because she did strike me. I'm not sure what that gives me, though. Uh, oh, sure. You're buoyed by circumstance. Choose an additional basic or master technique in the next exchange, yes. even on a miss. Oh, cool. So if you don't, if you don't roll a seven, like you get lower than that, and you, that means you can't do anything. You normally will have to take a fatigue to at least do a basic move, but you could use this instead and cash it in and not oh, have cool. to. Or you could do three things if you roll a ten plus, or or two things if you just roll a seven to nine. Love right. it. But uh, he is going to, uh, let's see, take one fatigue. So he has one damage and then give you two fatigue uh, coda as you are pummeled by flames, uh, striking you in your chest and burning you. Um, I will stomp the ground and uh, spikes will sort of pierce him as I retaliate against him. Okay, and he takes one, so that means he took a total of two, a lot of damage, uh, towards this and this uh, fire bender. Ah! <sighs> they got a little bite in them. That will end his turn. So up next is everyone who chose the 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 uh, maneuver uh, evade and maneuver. Observe. Observe. Thank you. Evade and observe. <laughs> uh, which is Vern. Everyone, the vast quantities of Vern. <laughs> so you can All go right. ahead and roll with harmony or creativity. Let's give it a roll. It okay. also says clear one fatigue as part of it as well, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Yeah. And you so, also get to clear one fatigue. That's awesome. So mm -hmm. I've rolled nine, but I get a plus three for my harmony. So I'll be rocking a steady 12 here Very as nice. I take a yeah. sigh on the bench. Kind of do the old man thing where you rock three times to stand up. Ah, and then uh, as I'm doing that, the earth beneath my feet is kind of and it's rocking with me. Um, I would like to use ground shift again uh, and shake the ground beneath uh, these people. So I will mark one fatigue to affect the entire area beneath these two. All affected foes become impaired for an exchange, but are either of them already impaired? No. No? Okay, perfect. So both of them become impaired then with my ground shift. Very nice, uh, very nice. So I will be marking one, but because I took the uh, focus, or evade and observe, I'll clear that one. Is, is it work that way? Oh, well, first first you get to clear it, and then you get in, you get it. So if, if, if you're trying to clear the one you just did, unfortunately, you wouldn't be able to because it's... Oh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah. Sounds good. So I'll mark that one down. And then for my second move, um, I would like to bolster or hinder. So aid or impede a nearby character, inflicting an appropriate status. Could I take some of that same earth that I had churned up and just foom, 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 and paste it on as armor around Coda uh, to give him empowered? 
Yes, I love that. I All love right. that. Right. Okay. So, Coda, you are you, you see the rocks up here around you and using it as like weapons that you can and you currently have the empowered status. All right. So that lets you clear one fatigue at the end of each exchange. It's like as they're throwing a blow at you, one of those rocks blocks it and then falls off. Oh, so it's this love kind of like, that. Yes. Uh, yeah, obstructing the attacks coming at you. Exactly. Okay. So, they see you, uh, they actually turn around and notice that you're engaging in this combat, realizing that you're not just some normal old man, that you have some techniques on you uh, around you as they stare and look at you <sighs> stay out of this old man we don't as they look at me i look over my shoulder like oh is it someone else <laughs> oh oh me <laughs> uh, get him <laughs> <laughs> all right so that will end this full exchange do we wish to continue the exchange or take it out of battle at the end of every exchange i'll ask that and we don't have to do it this way we can freeform it do you oh, want to continue gotcha. with this, or do you want to go back to free form? I like the battle. This is actually really cool. This is the I first time I've really dove yeah. into the combat system, so Battle's I'd like to keep good. going. All righty, then. So, I think Vern's blood's getting pumping, too, so he's ready <laughs> to keep rocking with it. Yeah. <laughs> then please choose your approaches. I've chosen mine. All right. <laughs> okay. So once chosen, please let me know what they are, or each other know. You can discuss it too. You don't have to yeah. worry about that. Is I have a I have a technical question that will determine what I want to do. Sure. Um. So I have an ability that says, if I have fewer conditions marked than my highest principle, I can roll as focus instead of my normal stat. Mm -hmm. Um. I have one condition, and I also have a one in my. Thing. So they're technically the same. Is it meets it beats it or is it? It's fewer. You would have to have one less. So meets uh, it does does not beat does not it. Beat okay. it I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. It does not beat it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. I need one second. Sorry. <laughs> that now. Yeah. I think uh, I will evade and observe. This go. So All I can right. uh, get yeah. a proper assessment from here as to what else they're going to be going for here. Okay. Um, and Vern, do you know what you're taking? Yes. Uh, Vern would like to also evade and observe. Being the uh, slow old man that he is, uh, I'm looking to use my patience uh, technique this next time around. It sounds like a lot of stuff happens, but it tires me out real quick. <laughs> so I'm excited. I love that patience can mark a lot of fatigue on myself. That's a very interesting <laughs> gameplay move. <laughs> uh, I will take advance and attack. Got it. Ooh, there we go. Advance and attack, Good. evade and observe. And Halra, where did you choose again? Uh, evade, and, or, uh, evade and observe. Okay, also. so uh, Vern and Halro will go last, and no one is choosing to defend and maneuver. Therefore, they are also choosing to attack. Uh, mm. So that means that Coda, you go first. Go ahead and roll with passion. Roll with passion. I am also um, empowered and favored. So does that the that affect anything right now <laughs> so you can uh, use the empower to you cash that in to do get another uh remove a fatigue at the end of my turn or this round oh as at the end of the exchange the whole exchange okay yeah uh, okay Ooh, not good what if the passion is a zero that's a three <laughs> a three okay so i will favored. trade in my favored <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, and then since you were powered last turn, you can remove it now since you got it already. It's not like it doesn't happen on your turn. It's just at the end of the exchange. So you, if you had a fatigue, you can get rid of it now. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then I also uncheck the unpowered as well. Yes. Okay. Well, no, no. You are arm. You are, unless, did your ability that you use uh, have a end on the empowered? Because you might always be empowered. Uh, so oh, I'm not sure. I, I just use the evade and observe uh, bolster or hinder. So it, it's like it seems to be a generic one. 
Oh. Uh, so oh. aid or impede a nearby character inflicting an appropriate status. So the thing I was trying to do was slap armor on him. Uh, and so the status I thought would be empowered for it. Yeah, so, so that I would be no duration though. Yeah, that would be just for the one then. But if you did it okay. again, or if you did something like as if if you were next into an, if you were in a mountain, for instance, you would be empowered for the entirety of the exchange. Or if you're cool. a firebender and you're in a volcano, <laughs> so like okay. That. All right. Um, so even though I failed, I'll use my I'll cash in my favor to still do one basic attack. Uh-huh. Correct. And I would like to strike. Okay. <laughs> um, I would like to, um, in this moment, have um, uh, put enough mud into these water restraints around me that I can pull, like, rip them off of me and break the the water shackles, and then um, uh, go down on all fours and like literally like run claw at this like lady, and then like lunge and jump on her and like strike her nice yeah okay strike her with the full and use my (laughs) use my use the earth to help propel me into her and like pummel her like i'm a dirty (laughs) grappler (laughs) got it got it so you get to choose um if you're not doing the one fatigue which means that um they force it uh strike a foe forcing them to mark two fatigue or mark mark a condition or shift their balance okay um you take one fatigue you can choose to do two fatigue or the uh, balance. Um, I took. No, no, no. I won't do it right now because I have two fatigue. I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to pass uh, out. Right. Not balance. Sorry, you give them a condition. But yes. Okay. All right. Fair mm-hmm. enough. So, oh, so I do the strike and you choose because I rolled low. Got. Yes. Sorry. Got it. Got it. <laughs> uh, yeah. No worries. So I think that she is going to want to. You said the water bedding, correct? Yeah. Okay. She was the one that was, like, grappling me. Mm -hmm. She was the one with one fatigue already. The other one had the the firebender has two. She does not want to take a fatigue. So instead, she is going to shift her balance away from the center. Now, you don't know what her balance, her two principles could be. You kind of try to figure that out, and then you can use that as another way to deal damage when uh, when, when you have those abilities. But Oh, because you can knock them off the edge to knock them out, too. Yeah. And their thing is not as big as yours. <laughs> oh, cool. She seems very angry. No. I was trying to be nice, but I won't be any more. I don't care if he wants you alive. I'm taking you out. Would, that, would we say that that reveals what their uh, principle is? Perhaps. You would have to take a guess. And All right. <laughs> Merlin's getting the impression that they are angry <laughs> well there's usually nice. two well actually no 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 there's just like oh. one for npcs okay Perhaps. gotcha okay <laughs> uh, but um all right so they chose yeah so they moved it over uh and that was your strike okay so they go now and they both also chose strike once again but i mean sorry uh attack and advance and attack but instead they are going to. Hmm. Hmm. Oh shoot. <laughs> yeah. They. Yeah. Actually, yes. They are going to. She's going to go ahead and take out. Um, her uh, more of her water whips and begin slashing down, slapping on the back of Coda in an attempt to pressure him and will use the pressuring ability, impress or intimidate a foe. Choose an approach and you cannot use this approach next exchange. She's going to stop you from attacking the next round. Oh, shoot. So you can choose another two. I got him! I got him steady! Take out this one. He's the strong one. The other ones are pushovers. Vern is mm. upset. <laughs> ah. You've done it now! <laughs> As I hear her say that. <laughs> That's what you think. <laughs> okay. And then now the firebender is going to go ahead and just keep laying it on Coda. Coda's the intimidating one. And will can't afford to take any more fatigue. So we'll just strike you and you can choose to mark two fatigue, mark and condition or shift your balance away from the center. I'll shift my balance. 
I'm going um, away from my uh, connections and further towards control. I need to, uh, I'm, I'm being weak. I, I was weak and that's why we're in this situation. And I should have trusted my instincts and this is wrong of me. And like, you like all see him like tense up and like, even though he's being bound, he's just like fighting him, his inner demons and you see him becoming like obsidian. Okay. As he's striking at you, why won't you go down? Just landing fire blast after you. You just feel that controlling nature of you take over, uh, realizing that it's up to you to do this. Take control of this battle. Let your shift to your balance. Okay. So that ends theirs. Now everyone who is going to evade and observe, go next. All right. Anything you're looking for to do, uh, Halro? I'm not really sure yet. I don't know if I okay. can react. So you go ahead. You go first. So uh, I had a specific question. He can't take the advance and attack technique next turn. But if I gave him a, a, a way to use advance and attack on this exchange, would he be able to? Uh, mm -hmm. I have patience. You wait until the perfect moment. Mark one fatigue to gain prepared and use an advance and attack technique. Mark another fatigue to allow a companion engaged with that same foe to also use an advance and attack technique against oh. them as well. Yes, you can go okay. ahead and right now use an advance attack technique if you take these two fatigues. Okay, so here, uh, first I gotta roll, I believe. So let mm -hmm. me roll that. Okay. Roll. All right, Harmony I got a... Creativity. What's that? Harmony or creativity? Okay, I'll do harmony. So I rolled a seven, but plus three. So I'm, I'm yeah. back up to 10. Yeah. I'm so glad I took that plus three. I was on the edge. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now a 10 with this allows me to pick two, correct? Yes. All right, so my first one that I would like to pick is uh, patience. So I'm there and as I see all this happening, you can see that like a, a more quick to anger person would have jumped in too hastily. Uh, Vern saw the perfect opportunity, mm -hmm. and despite the insults hurled by our foes, uh, he has now timed it to the point where, as there's this pause in those water whips going in, Vern will launch up two pillars. So he will mark one fatigue to allow uh, Coda to launch an attack in this single moment here as I, as I block uh, the water strikes. Okay, and Coda, how do you respond? There's an opening. I will, um, this is a maneuver we have done many times before, just as we uh, showcased, uh, sort of like, you know, like when a, a bullet is shot through rubber and you see like that, like, uh, mm. pierce, it's sort of the yeah. same thing. I smack my hand onto this pillar and spikes, like, jut out the backside <laughs> towards this person to pierce them. That's awesome. Very nice. And does this inflict, you're doing the strike, you said? Yeah, I'll do the strike. Okay, uh, and this is on to whom? You're engaged with two people right now. Um, I feel like I've been, like, uh, we're trying to take out the, the water one. She's, oh no, she's, uh, I'll do it on the, the fire, dude. I'll, I'll smack the, I'll sm like uh, backhand the, the pillar and hit the uh, spikes towards the firebender because he was, had already had two fatigue. Yes, so, so he is trying, not gonna uh, choose that. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you take a fatigue. And, uh, and I will. I'll take a fatigue to make him take the fatigue. Okay. Uh, there we go. All the pressure. Yeah, yeah. So instead of front hand palming it, I actually smack the pillar, and the spikes come out the side and towards him. Okay. Right. Shoo, shoo, ah! As he falls down, doof, doof. Uh, the uh, water band turns around and says, "Macro, no! Oh, you've done it now, and he is out." Oh, okay. Uh, uh, as she looks down and is upset, I will mark one fatigue as well to enact the second part of patience. Mark one fatigue to gain prepared and use an advance attack technique yourself. Uh, so now I will use my advance and attack technique, and I would like to use rock column. Pin a foe with a column of earth, inflict impaired on a single combatant. If they are already compared, inflict trapped. So 
uh, I had them impaired from that shake as I rocked to get out of my seat. Mm -hmm. And uh, at this point, I'll do one more stretch, and as I'm stretching, and my one foot kind of comes up, and I stomp back down. Mm -hmm. As I do, a pillar just goes doof and clocks her, uh, and nice. it'll inflict trap. Wrapped. Okay, so she's wrapped up, ah! and now she is trapped uh, and impaired. Uh, so any physical movements that require her, she will definitely may not be able to do. Uh, <laughs> um, so for trapped specifically, it's saying uh, you are completely helpless, and you must mark a combination of three fatigue or conditions to escape. But they can mix and match, it sounds like. Yeah. Oh. That's only if they want to escape. Yeah. So, so right now <laughs> she's trapped and she <laughs> doesn't want, she's trying to get out. She's like, uh, uh. she still has the use of her arms, although she cannot move. So she's kind of this waist deep into earth right now, trying her best to get around uh, this. And I just realized I made a mistake, but it's fine. I said that he was a f earthbender, and I made the guy firebender midway. <laughs> oh. <laughs> magma bender. the avatar. It's the magma one, right? Yeah. He's doing the both. He, he, he was lava bending. We're changing. Lava yeah. bending. Lava there we bending. go. Perfect. Shooting lava at you. Yeah. So <laughs> I think that was all still patience, which is crazy, but it did cost me a lot of fatigue. Mm -hmm. So now I'd like to also, um, as she's there and she's trapped, could I do test balance? Mark one fatigue to challenge an engaged foe's balance. Ask what their principle is if they have, and they answer honestly. If you already know their principle, instead shift their balance away from sender by questioning or challenging their beliefs. Could I do that? You certainly can. What, are you gonna ask what it is, which will mean that you can't do it, or are you gonna take a guess? I'm gonna take a guess. I'm going to say that theirs is like anger or rage. Okay. So you go ahead. And how do you test this, uh, the balance? I know the rage, the anger you feel. I felt it back in the war. But trust me, in the end, when you are as old and senile as I am, you'll think back on those days and remember you could have been on a more good side. You are now trying to shake the balance of the earth in ways that are far beyond your comprehension. Don't look back and realize your mistakes too late like I might have. Not saying that I would ever make mistakes, boys. <laughs> and you're trying to push her over the edge of anger. Hmm. So if that is it. So she's trapped right now uh, with just her water whips that are still tied around uh, Coda. She looks at you and says, just... You're not my father. Stop it. Stop it. Stop telling me what to do. Uh, uh, I gotta get out of here. I gotta get out of here. <laughs> she releases the water whips and just kind of just goes limp. <laughs> I can't take it. I don't want to be this person anymore. I don't want her. help. I don't want her to feel trapped now. I was like, hey, hey, it's all right. And I'll go over and I'll pat her on the head. <laughs> <laughs> she just falls down and starts crying, <laughs> and you have defeated her because that was that pushed uh, that pushed her over the edge because she already did one and she only had two. <laughs> oh great! All right. Okay. Uh, immediately, I'll go over, pat her on the head, and uh, while they're talking, if they want to ask any questions, Vern's gonna shuffle back into the building and try to get her some tea. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess we would check and see where. Give her a basic interrogation of where. What are you? What are you trying to do, coming after us? And why do you pretending to be a uh, police force while you're while you're at it? Go ahead and uh, roll for me a uh, plead. Uh, but I'm gonna give you a plus two forward because she is. She, so you get two <laughs> towards this. Uh, two okay. Uh, right. So go ahead and roll with harmony plus two. With harmony. All right. Uh, 10 plus my harmony is already one. a super success. So that Great. is, yeah, an 11. Is that with the two as well, or no? Oh, with the two is a 13, actually. Not so that it matters, better. but yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I kind of got there. Mm -hmm. We stack as deep as we can go. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, Tell yeah, whatever just you want. like, yeah, just in your, you know, Tell us very simply, and we won't bring any more harm to you. We just have to secure our mission, just like 
you were trying to secure yours, and we'll be on our way. <sighs> it's Coda. He's the one who's been capturing these bending children, these prodigies, trying to use them for his nefarious purposes. He wants to take over not just uh, the northern uh, water tribe, but the south as well. Establish himself as the, the, the water tribe chieftain. In order to uh, do this, he wants to close out all of the, the spirit portals, thereby weakening the bending prowess of the waterbenders and somehow solidifying his. <sighs> By using these children, he's, he's in a warehouse, a warehouse 62, uh, preparing this ritual. <laughs> just please, just, just please let me go. Vern shuffles back out with the tea, <laughs> gives her a little sip, and uh, gives her another pat on the head. Mm-hmm. And uh, he turns to the others and like, she's been through a lot today. And uh, he'll take a little, another little cup of it and splash it on the unconscious guy. <laughs> <laughs> where? Where? Did we win? It's over. It's over, Macro. Uh, shucks. And I'll pat him, on, pat the him on the head too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I will. You see, Coda is like visibly, like shaking, like with this information, and he uh, walks over and he like smacks the cup of tea out of her hand and says, "You don't deserve our kindness. <laughs> you better reflect on what you have done and be thankful for your life." Don't drink tea in front of me. Bird <laughs> shuffles back into the building for another glass. <laughs> I'll stomp my feet and just put a treadmill under him. So, uh, so or like the the staircase is constantly yeah. pulling him back down, Scooby Doo style. There we go. How does this out? Oh, go ahead. Uh, uh, I was gonna say you disgust me. Relinquish everything right here. Do better and turn yourselves into the true police. If you do this right now, we will let you. Otherwise, you'll be as in a worse off spot than those refugees you intimidated. <laughs> yeah. Okay. She looks at her hands that are wet from the tea and looks up at you. I, I understand. Come on, Macro. We, we're not cut out for this. Well, I told you everything we know. Where to go? He's there now, preparing for tonight. If you head there now, maybe you'll be able to put a stop to whatever he's doing. What's the password? There's always a password to places like this. <laughs> What's the code? No code, but there's a secret entryway. There's a side door. Uh, there's one brick that's uh, off-colored in the rest. Pull on that one, it'll open it up. That sounds like a smuggler's tunnel. (laughs) I will, like, grab her, like, jacket and just, like, and just, like, let her go and just say, I'm so mad at you. Children! Uh, I go over to Coda and just sort of tap him on the shoulder and say, it's okay. We, We can't lose our focus. Are you uh, trying to guide and comfort him? Yes, I'm trying to offer whatever comfort I can at at this time. Go ahead and roll with harmony, please. Okay. I'm going to try to ease things up a little bit. Uh, Nine with harmony, is, which is one. So ten for that also. Ten, okay. Mm -hmm. Do you accept this uh, guide and comfort? Coda, and then you can relieve yourself of a condition or a um, uh, because you're angry right now, or fatigue, if you want. No. (laughs) (laughs) No. It's just not getting there. They, I do not embrace it. I do, I choose the they shut you down. Uh, right or whatever or what do I yeah, choose? You should, yeah, yeah. Oh. You you could just choose to shut oh. him down. 
I, I can't right now. Harlow, you are a stalwart defense, and you keep us safe. But these people do not deserve our pity. Okay, since you shut him down, you get to give him and shift his balance if you want, or inflict a yeah, condition. I might get shifted. What do you want to do, Coda? Um, I will shift his balance. Sure. So I think it's actually Coda or does mine. inflict a condition. And then uh, Halro can shift the uh, Coda's balance, right? Oh, oh, exactly. sorry. Yes, you, thank you for calling me out on that one. Oh, you get sorry, to, no, 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 okay. no, 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 it was good. No, 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 it was good because I totally uh, um, mixed that up. Yes, Coda, you can give a condition in return. Halro, you can shift his balance. Okay. So, sorry, say that again. I give a condition. Yes. Yeah, yep. and I shift your balance. Okay, I will give you the the guilty condition. Yeah, because I'm not uh, succeeding and. In- our long partnership to uh, stay focused and moving ahead. And it's uh, weighing on you terribly along with this personal, uh, you know, uh, attack and all these other things. So uh, I'm feeling incredibly befallen over such a thing. And that will in turn shift your balance uh, as well. Given my uh, closer to connection or or should I shift that away to control? It's up to you. Well, to uh, Halbro. I, would shift it, you don't have as much control over the situation so i think it should go the other way okay i'll move it to closer to connection since that's what you were attempting to do anyway right yeah, and I'm it's just to not here, reaching man. You. <laughs> cool <laughs> okay and i am guilty over it yeah okay and so you are still angry then uh coda so minus two to those appropriate uh roles yeah i get a minus two to guide and comfort and assess Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah, and... I minus two uh, push your luck and deny a call out. Or plus two to deny a call out, rather. <clears throat> okay. So, with that being said, in that altercation, they back up and says, are we, are we free to go? Yeah, we're good here. Come on. And they scurry off. Before they leave, I'll pull one of the pieces of obsidian on my bracelet and I'll uh, throw it towards her. And I'll say, this is a shard of uh, Onyx Obsidian. Keep this as a reminder of this day. Oh, and shoot. your vow to me. She picks it up and nods and runs off. Um, would this be when I have tried to best prove that I am a different person better through my actions? <laughs> Uh, not quite. Save it. <laughs> I would say not quite. I mean. Okay, save it. Save it. <laughs> uh, Got maybe it. not. <laughs> so, what do you guys want to do next? As you have now found the location of of Cato, as well as where the child, the children, uh, are being held, and you know when it's going to be going, but you know that he's there preparing right now. The choice is yours. I need, uh, I will um, kneel down in front of Vern and say, we must save these children, but I am tired. And I'll sort of prostrate myself and show like the whiplash on my back to indicate that I'm very fatigued. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll then go to him and no strings attached. Just could I offer a uh, comfort as well? Not, sure. not trying to calm his anger, but just trying to make sure that he is knowing that we are here for him. Yep. Go ahead and roll with harmony, please. All right. I, I got a seven, but plus three harmony, so that's another 10. There it is, another 10. Right. Very, right. very nice. So, so. Uh, you can totally clear fatigue if he, or do you accept, I should say? I will accept this uh, embrace. Okay. Oh. So I missed it the first time. Sorry. But I was reading it now. And uh, I have, you do not earn growth. It's under wisdom of the ages on the elder sheet. You do not earn growth. When a PC embraces your guidance and comfort, you may shift toward experience to declare them a protege. (laughs) Write their name in one of their principles below. 
when that PC shifts their center toward that principal, clear their name and take an advancement. Now, I don't know what an advancement is, but it sounds cool. So advancements are what's used when you level up. You okay. get to get more ability. So in this case, that ability won't do so much for the one shot. But yes, going All if right. you were to do it in a campaign, that would be very good. That's cool. Maybe uh, we'll get a plus one or two to a special moment later. Yeah, <laughs> write it down. Nice. Yeah, right. yeah, write it down. Jot it down for that. Yeah. yeah, I like it. Mm -hmm. So I will write you down as one of my proteges, and I would like to try to convince you to move towards control. Uh, so I have to write down one of those things, and if I can convince you to do that, then good things are happening for me. Well, here's uh -huh. a good combo because you rolled a 10 plus, so you may shift uh, also shift their balance. Oh, oh. cool. Okay. <laughs> uh, I would like, I guess, uh, do I feel like they are balanced right now? Uh, or are they still on that side of, con uh, sorry, uh, I meant, um, what, what's the what's the friendly one that you have? You have control uh, con and then- Control and connection. Connection. I'm at, connection I'm at plus one control. Yes, I would like to try to push you back towards connection. I believe that when we're better when we work as a group. So uh, if I could pull you towards connection there. That would put me at uh, balance. Okay, right, go. and it's one good to be balanced, one right? One yeah. uh, not for me. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, shoot. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I am... Um... I uh, also, because I also have a, a, a thing to this is your connection principal play starts locked. Um, you cannot shift your balance higher than plus zero connection. Um, and if I were to shift it any higher, I actually lose balance, but my uh, a center shifts over. And I think it's because it's meant to be like such a person, but you put me to where I can be. I can be in balance. Okay. So because um, it's a one shot, maybe Tailweaver can figure something out. Maybe we can. That's cool. It. That's really cool. All right. Uh, I, I love that there's such depth for exploring something like that. But mm -hmm. yeah, in that situation, I'm I'm very tempted to try to pull you as close as I can to this familial connection that we are building as a team here. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll pull you that way back to zero. Okay. Cool. And then it says. Part of that, the, the cool part of the bottom of that ability says, when you sh uh, shift your center to plus one, two, or three, um, the connection for the first time, choose a companion who you've connected, and then you they give you one of your playbook moves, ignoring oh, advancement uh, limits. Okay. So like, I feel like maybe if we get a plus, if you pull me to connection plus one, I'll, I'll get it. Or I don't know if this counts now, since they did cool. shift me two whole balances in <laughs> this moment. Yeah, yeah, cool. So you're at, you're at zero. One more shift into the, when you were to, if you were to lose yourself, that's when you kind of get it and then it shifts um, over. Your character is definitely so set in their ways that it's easier to have those moments. So, and then think of Zuko from Avatar, how he was gosh. very set in his ways. And every time he was challenged, he had a huge explosion. He was the most emo edgelord of all because <laughs> <laughs> he was a razor, basically. So, okay. So when I, I hit up- I definitely want to teach you my eat dirt move where I throw the pebble around. <laughs> oh, love that. Okay, so if when when you guys shift me up closer to connection, I'll, I'll get to- make a bond with you and then te you'll get to teach me a move cool i like <laughs> okay. it um awesome. so i think do i have to then move towards experience because i did that I believe. yes if it, I, yeah. okay yeah all right and so, then i remove two fatigue right mm -hmm. awesome Thank or clear you. a condition if you don't want to be angry anymore um no i'm angry okay <laughs> <laughs> just staying angry no one stay angry on die that. angry yeah right. i'm fighting I'm angry just, yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right so i'm now at plus two experience minus two humil humility <laughs> so i'm getting more and more cocky in myself as i'm <laughs> influencing the people around me but i feel it's only positive ways <laughs> awesome yes okay so with this exchange uh, completed and you all uh helping each other comforting each other but still on edge you now have a location what happens next what do we want to do next I think it's time to go there and uh, yeah. thwart some bad guys. Yeah, time is of the essence, and we don't know how prepared he is or whatever could happen. We have to get over there and see what see what he's holding over there, aside from our objective. We don't even know how much is going on. Yeah. As we're walking over, uh, you can see the limp is a little more steep than usual. Uh, 
Vern is rocking three fatigue. <laughs> is there yeah. uh, a general tactic for removing that other than a long nap or? <laughs> uh, it's like a rest or guide okay. or or someone will just guide, have to guide and comfort you. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I am too just... angry to talk to you right now. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I could try to offer what consultation I can, if, even though I'm just just try to with Coda also, and I can't rein everybody in. But I don't know if I could try again with Vern. I will. Just you can to give him, you know, it bolster, you know, uh, everything that we've been through so far, and you know that we're, you know, uh, the the. The, the, your old bones are, are going to be able to pull through in the end, you know, all that kind of stuff. Oh, no, my camera went out. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Not As my camera a... won't, but but Vern will. So no worries Perfect. there. Hang on one second. At least uh, you're smiling. Yeah, yeah. It, it was a really good <laughs> right. was Oh, good. Smile. It helped me on that. Awesome. Yeah. All right. There we go. I should be back now. Yep. All right. Okay. Perfect. Um, so, yeah, I'll try to do that for Vern. All right. Appreciate that. Yeah. All right. All right. Go ahead. And roll what am I harmony. rolling with this with? Harmony. Harmony. Mm -hmm. Okay. Harmony again. Oh, that's a ten with harmony, which is <laughs> two. So that's twelve this time. Nice. nice. So you. Oh, can... eleven. I'm sorry. Harmony is one, so it's eleven. Still fine. Yeah. That's more than enough. Still good. Still put over ten. So you could do two. Now, do you want to shift his balance? <laughs> I, and <laughs> yeah, I could. He, I, I could shift it, but he already has i think he's already fairly centered and there could be other things that could be shifting more of one direction or the other so i think it might be better to not affect that just try to take the fatigue try to take some of the burden off of uh, everything we've been we've been going through by well can you do both can. because you rolled so high I, yeah you could do both oh i can do that because yeah. it was plus 10, 10 right yeah. mm -hmm. so all right so then i i will more toward what are your what are your two so I am very uh, cocky right now, and ex right. I'm relying on my experience, but uh, my other side would be more humility. Okay, so maybe we move more toward humility that, you know, if you've been pressing into, you know, we know that you're uh, renowned for all this time and all of our <laughs> clan, everybody knows this, especially with the war and everything else, but we are still trying to set the example to be you know, as unified and, and, and even handed as, as a team, even in, you know, uh, you, you being our, our more or less our lead in this so that, you know, we all try to center in that respect to ourselves. As Vern's shouldering so much of this burden on his old shoulders, uh, he sees the look of concern in your eyes and realizes, no, it's time to let that younger generation bear some of this burden with him. And uh, he does take a dose of humility as uh, you help him reduce some of the fatigue and he'll accept a little bit of a, a help, a helping hand as he's hobbling along, even though it hurts his pride just a little bit. <laughs> you know how like in anime moments, they would like sometimes like flash to like a, like chibi scene or something else. Yeah. And I picture like a, a chibi yeah. Vern, like holding, like holding the, the world on his shoulders and handing it to Harlow, yeah. the guardian. Yeah. Just and, help him hold and, a little bit. And, and then... he's becoming the new Atlas, you know? Right. And we can handle this together. Yeah. That's awesome. The future is ours, not just falls on one. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I love that. So go ahead and minus two fatigue and shift yourself over to, um, uh, humility. Great. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so welcome. So after that heartwarming experience, you continue to make your way. You said you were heading to Warehouse 62? Yep. Most okay. bumping place in Republic City. No, <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so you begin traveling and cutting through. The traffic is picking up. There are tons of people. You hear whispers about, oh, there was an attack on the United Nations. Really? Yes. And and they never caught the perpetrator. They're still looking for them. Oh, so they find it. And you continue to listen and hear that as you make your way back towards the wharf, uh, where you can hear the cries of the seagulls and the pushing and pulling of the waves as you, uh, in the scent of salt, as you go around and start looking for the building. About this, uh, do we say anything happens here or do we want to go straight and say uh, we found the building and now need to find our way in? What happens next? 
can I ask a question? Yeah. I was just reading, um, sorry, my, my little cheat sheet here. And when Halra was trying to console me, um, would my um, lashing at, or like, because it says clearing conditions for angry, break something important or lash out at a friend? Would that have counted as lashing out at him? Did no? you lash out or did you say no? I mean, I did say no, but like, okay, fine. I have to... <laughs> you were, you were I'm just so angry. It, but I'm, yeah, yeah, no, the anger was coming in my direction. For... Mm -hmm. It was, okay. It wasn't enough of a lash. I get you. Okay. <laughs> I was just testing. I was just testing. <laughs> I want to see you commit. I want you to <laughs> I'll give you a little. I felt it. I definitely felt it. Okay, okay. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Just checking. <laughs> Sorry. Um, I, I think that maybe if. Um, what we would want to happen would be to sort of scope it out and like find that hidden passageway that they told us about, right? Or like find that brick. Right. So I'm sure that'll get us in there, no problem. Sounds so good, yeah. We should look for that first. Now that we're back to the sneaking, Vern takes a big yeah. sigh and passes the lead off to the uh, the young whippersnappers. Right. It's. Oh, we're getting really good at it now. It didn't work out great last time, but it, we're slowly getting there. Look, the name of the game is Get the Jump. <laughs> okay. So we enter stealth mode yet again. Though it's still bright day out, the docks are busy, though. And you can see that there are sales uh, uh, salespeople uh, selling like their wares and fish and other things on uh, as this is part of a market as well. Uh, as you blend in, you begin to check and analyze and observe. So finally seeing a small warehouse, small than the rest, you wouldn't have spotted it if you weren't looking for it, with very small lettering on the top that says, or numbering that says 62 on it. As you begin to check and look and peruse the exterior, you find the building is all red brick, but there's one slight off-colored one. And you remember what uh, the waterbender has said. What do you do? Do you open it? Go through it? Is this really the right warehouse? Because I thought you said 66. Uh, 62. Oh, 62. 62. Okay, yeah. sorry. I was just being smart. <laughs> 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 okay, caught, caught. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, yeah, let's let's do it. That's what we said, right? Yeah. Any, uh, I'll turn to the others before we uh, pull the brick. Be like, are we getting the jump or are we going to stake it out? This is it. We found it. Uh, we've come this far. I say we get the jump. Vern does the the fist pound thing. And... <laughs> yeah. uh, let's uh, yeah, do. Let's pound. do the three way fist yeah. pound. Yeah. <laughs> do, do, do. There. Earth Earth trio and <laughs> Team Porcelain. Right? Yeah, Team yeah, Porcelain. Team porcelain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, put on our yep. half half porcelain masks yeah and, <laughs> they're and, all shattered uh, still but we got the pieces on <laughs> yeah we have that phantom the upper realness. yes <laughs> okay and then you go ahead and pull the brick and when you do the wall uh, opens up slightly uh in about, in about like a seven foot door shape and you see inside is a tunnel a metal tunnel with pipes going along the ceilings, uh, but it's dark, barely visible. But you can tell from this, this distance, about 30 feet away, there is a metal door. You all step inside. As, as after a few seconds, the door closes back, locking you in the dark. You begin walking until finally, ju judging from where you were, you bump into the door and can feel around for a handle. Uh, before we go in, I'll say in a hushed whisper, remember, our objective here is to secure Hakan. They're the target. The Avatar has warned us that we have to bring back. The others are important but we must control the situation. And he is the key. Halro, I'm looking to you. Make sure you are their shield in this moment. Vern, I will keep them safe, especially... Yeah. I know you will. You're the strongest bulk work I have ever met. 
You're my rock, kid. You're my rock. <laughs> Vern, I know you'll find the key. You'll find the way out. Lead us to victory, as you have many times before. Vern nods solemnly and feels his humility slipping away again. <laughs> and you can see, and you see like him. I like, I'll like smear mud on my arm, like on my arms, and uh, you know, I'll do what I do best. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So you turn, you find the knob and turn it. Uh, it does. Sorry, open. could that actually be a guide and comfort, even though I'm angry? <laughs> I do get a minus two, but I, I feel like that is kind of guiding the group. Oh, you yeah, you want to try to guide us? Yeah, yeah. Pepping this yeah. Up, so go ahead and roll with harmony minus two. Or could I say that in this situation, I'm actually neither neither control nor balance. I'm at zero because you guys shifted me, so I can't can't, <laughs> can't justify using my balance. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we centered you. Oh, c- come on, come on. Oh. oh wow, and I take a minus two. So that's a zero. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, <laughs> unsuccessful pep talk. Oh, that's tough. You're still too angry. Yeah, yeah. you're there. I'm like, oh, sorry. It's, it's, a a it's a one. It's a oh, it's a one. <laughs> it's oh. a one. <laughs> all the intent is there. It's just not. It's all coming out in a big like flash of just angry. That's tough. Yeah. I tried. <laughs> we tried. We all tried. You know. I think what We're I say is true, but we don't get any bonus for it. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, and then with the handle, we'll open the door. Okay. Mm. Not like I, I, I gestured like I was swinging it open, but I'm really gonna do it slowly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Actually, yeah. <laughs> you open up the door and step inside of the warehouse. You look to your left and to your right into this humongous space, and it is dimly lit other than the sparks of light that happens every few seconds. As you continue to look and you check around the corner, you can see where the source of light is. You see standing there in his suit uh, without the mask, uh, Cato, uh, where you see that there are several tubes of some kind, containers, uh, with children inside who are just sitting with their legs crossed, sitting down, and the one that where the light's coming from, it looks to be a androgynous looking child uh, with a bald head, um, wearing an all blue with waves, uh, um, almost like a gi of some sort. Um, they're sitting there. With their eyes closed, you see some tears falling down as Coda is just moving his arms around in circles as energy seems to be being pulled from this vat, this tube that the child is in. Soon, soon I will muster enough energy and then not only would I be able to close the spirit portal here in Republic City, but in the north and southern water tribes as well. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. halfway through his next monologue can I just hit him in the head with a stone <laughs> <laughs> you totally can I just want to do the little pebble just dunk, get, right. get him again on the side of the head just right like he's earlier. about to crescendo some big like it was all me I'm gonna, I got this yeah <laughs> alright go ahead um, so and then I will oh! <laughs> what was that who's there and he turns around searching <laughs> The light stops suddenly, uh, and he turns on the actual lights, getting a switch with his water bending. <laughs> doom, 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 as the entire warehouse illuminates, revealing all of you who are standing there. Mm-hmm. You three. You called for us? Where are my guards? How did you get in here? Well, we just kind of used the door. I. Burn! Like not worm, now. Security. <laughs> Go. <laughs> Charge. Right. The important thing is we're here now, and we're and your your scheme is at an end. How how like far away from uh, uh, how uh, how apart are we? <laughs> <laughs> You're a general. Oh, so he's about like thirty feet away from you in this platform where you see these several about. So there's four in tribe. So four um, 
tubes with the children inside them, one for every nation. Um, and you are right next to each other, just shoulder to shoulder at this point. Like, are there, where we came in from a back room, like, did we come in, like, in, like, on the gr same ground level yeah. in uh -huh. the back room? We're not, yeah. like, above or below no, them? No, no. Okay. Um, is there, what, is there, like, any scaffolding or stuff from above? Like, yeah, there's roping? a second. Roping, no. It's pretty clean and clear here, but there is a second tier, like a, uh, a scaffolding that's around there that mm -hmm. you can go, but it's around the perimeter of it. So if you, there are some ladders you can climb up there to get there as well if you wanted to. Okay. Uh, could I do the column, the rock column move? And just have it go punch through those tubes and try to free the kids. Like if I could just go doo -doo 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 -doo, with one column across all the tubes. Okay, roll me, roll with focus as you rely focus. on your skills and training to do this. All right, let's do it. All right, it's a four and a three, but I don't know if that's good because I might have a minus one. Nope, I have a plus one, so that's eight oh. total. Eight, okay, all right. So, with that being said, you go ahead and earth. So where's the earth coming? Well, you say, where's this earth you're pulling it from? You're just pulling from the, because you can feel it beneath the ground. Yeah, it was bricks, right? Or the, yeah. the on the sides? Or the, yeah. or the metal One tubes. of the bricks walls. I'll just have it like the line of bricks. Instead of being stacked, they'll come out in a straight line. Do, 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 do. And the go. bricks will just build across in one straight line through uh, each of the tubes. Oh, I like that. <laughs> All the tubes shatter as the children hold their hands over their heads uh, as the glass spreads apart. He looks aside to the, his left and right Kato and says, How dare you? I'll take you out myself as he throws off his, uh, his like, the shoot jacket, just somehow is able to just tear it off, revealing his uh. muscular body as he strengthens himself and just pulls water from the windows coming from the outside from the water, sowing his prowess with water bending as he surrounds himself with a huge um, kind of, like, circular halo of energy around, of water around him. And... Uh. Oh, go ahead. Can can we act? I don't know. Can like uh. Well, if we're going to f fight that, this will be another exchange. If we want, we could do an exchange mode, or we can freestyle this as well. It's totally up to you how we want to do this. I kind think of before battle. jumping into an exchange, Vern will with super confidence hold up his pebble and go, Foom, and it flies forward. And he's like, oh, this is gonna take him out, and it just kind of like hits the water shield and falls off. He's like, oh, huh, dang, really thought that would work. <laughs> Not a good track record so far. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I'm fine with doing freestyle or going into order if you got whatever you guys think. Let's try some freestyle. Mix it up. Let's Do a little bit of freestyle. Both. We've had some order. Let's let's see how freestyle goes. Okay. 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 Right. So for this, we'll just talk through, and whenever you try to do something, it'll be mostly a skills and relying on your skill and training. Or if you do something even beyond, it might be a push your luck, and then Ooh, I'll, okay. I'll I'll apply an appropriate damage to that. All or, right, and so on. All right, so, oh, go ahead. I would like to, after now seeing Vern, like strike him and he pulls out his uh, water shield, I'll, I'll say, come on, yeah, let's get messy. And I'll run and use sort of um, the earth to sort of like jettison me up. But then I wanna like land and three point like superhero lands in front of him and <laughs> uh, ripple the earth out and do thick mud. And it says, transform the earth and stone around you into sticky, sinking mud. And any foes engaged with you and acting against you in this exchange become stuck and impaired. And then it says, you may use the strike against each foe that is stuck in this in the next exchange, regardless of your chosen approach in addition to normal techniques. So I get to beat the shit out of him every time. <laughs> okay. Well, since we're, well, yes, the true, but he might be able to do something outside yeah. the end of the exchange to get himself out. Okay, yes. I'll right. try, so I guess it tries to stuck and impair him. Okay, got it. Cool. Go ahead and, because you're, since you're launching yourself so fast and you want to safely land in front, slightly pushing your luck, go ahead and roll with, I believe that is, I'm having a brain fart. Passion and sense. Passion, thank you, yes. Roll with passion. Passion. Ooh, that's a six. Can I get some help? Oh yeah, Vern over on the side. He sees your technique and how you landed. He's like, 
he always forgets to keep his back foot grounded. And so <laughs> I'll throw one of those bricks right under your back foot so it's that extra grounding you need. <laughs> okay. Yes. Bring so you to a fatigue to add one to your result. Excellent. So that is a soft hit. So you push and launch and then you're about to slip and overshoot it but use the momentum from burns brick to push off and land now it is hard because with that velocity you're not able to slow you down slow yourself down as much so you will take one fatigue because of this can i also um bargain for pulling the glass shards into the earth away from the kids and keeping their path unimpeded yeah go go I'll allow that. Since you pushed your luck and you succeeded, yes, you could do that as well. As you land in front of them and attempt to wrap them around in. We, we, uh, once again, what are you trying to do? Impair it's, him call, and... it's called um, thick mud. So I'm going to all of like the brick and stone in this area is going to like get like slippery and sticky, and it's going to stuck and impair him. And then if he's in it, I'll be able to strike him uh, as an extra ability. Me. Definitely the walls are made out of this brick and using that it kind of almost turns into like a viscous liquid around him and like hardens like ah, ah, as he is stuck in impaired ter- as the children go ah, ah, and the one child who he was siphoning it seemed like runs out thank you thank you we're with the avatar for the spirits go and uh, he goes ahead and or they, they the children run away uh, anyone else doing anything uh, I don't know. I just, uh, probably just try to watch to see, uh, to make sure that they get out all right. Because, uh, that seems like he's pretty well handled right there in the middle. So I, I guess I provide some, you know, in case there's any structural issues or anything else to give them safe passage on the way out. So that nothing else affects them from, you know, around them. Just bending whatever else around it so that they can get through safely. Okay, I'll say he's going to go. Oh, sorry, go no, 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 go. Seeing Halro guarding them, uh, filling his guardian role, uh, Vern will step forward as the elder and begin to, I'd like to try to bolster um, Coda as they go in. So I'd like to do that same tactic of boom, 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 and have the bricks kind of form into armor around Coda. Uh, mm-hmm. If I could give him empowered again. Totally, Coda. So you are empowered. Um. Awesome. Also, I was going to say, Halro, I forgot. You had the uh, Earth Armor ability, right? So did yes. you activate your Earth Armor as you were, like, guarding these children? Yes, Ooh, I did cool. activate everything that I could uh, together. So, yeah, no, I would absolutely give myself or give whoever I could armor. I don't know if it's just myself. Well, if you're guarding the kids. Yeah, then I'll make sure that, yeah, in case I need, you know, to escort them out and that larger things are affecting, you know, going to fall on them or whatever else. I'm, like, right there to, to no. protect them. It's a good thing you do that as you go ahead and prepare and cause this earth and shield to guard you and you hold the kids back like around them guarding them as he goes yeah. no no he moves his he still has the although he is trapped and impaired he still has motions with his wrist and he is a water bending master he begins moving his fingers around in different motions and almost commanding the waters around him as they shoot up and around uh mm-hmm. and sh- go down to attempt to grapple the children, specifically the one child who, uh, um, Hakan, who has that ability that he needs. Uh, but with you being there, I would say that it whips around you instead, grappling on you. And what does the right. Earthen Shield do? It, uh... Oh, armor? The Earthen Armor, uh... It lets him negate a condition. I think it negates fatigue. the condition, yeah. Okay, because I was gonna say that, oh, a condition? Yeah, it says negate a condition or two fatigue that would get inflicted upon you. Yeah, or the fatigue, I think that's yeah. different from statuses, so I don't know. Yeah, it's different from status. Yeah, oh. because, yeah it's, different, it's different from status, but that's okay. okay so the fatigue so, or... Mm-hmm. You are, uh, this ability whips down and grabs on you, like holding on your arms and legs and starts to constrict. So you are current, um, you have protected the child from being captured, mm-hmm. but you are going to take two fatigue from this ability. But because you have that ability, uh, it yeah. is negated. But you Build currently the have the impaired status as okay. you are just held tight. Mm-hmm. You, uh, it says you have hold three and you can 
uh, basically like trade one of them off to negate two fatigue or a condition. So now you have hold two. So a part of your armor might have broken off or something. Oh, cool. Okay. okay. So you have three so charges lost, on it. You have like three charges of it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, how does how does your earth armor look? Yeah. It's uh, just probably a combination of everything else around. That's uh, some of the mud and then uh, other you know elements of debris and other things just all flowing into becoming the one the one thing together that's going to protect all of it yeah awesome okay and i would think the last thing that he does is he makes uh, uh and seeing you there he grabs more of the water around him as it begins to move like a razor and cut through the uh the thick uh rock that's around his body it's as he slowly is breaking through i will not be denied okay. we'll just say who wants to do something next Oh shoot, Coda! Now's your chance. As I slap the armor onto him from the last turn, I will absolutely. Since I am empowered now, I will lunge forward and try and strike him while he is uh, uh, impaired. Mm -hmm. And I guess I roll a attack with my passion, right? Oh well, no. Since we're not, remember, we're not in exchange. So although oh, okay. this is just like, say what you want to do, and I'll oh, let okay. you know. Um, mm. So yeah, I will um, say you're going nowhere. This is my messy field, and with the extra armor on top of me, and feeling this like extra weight, I'm going to sort of like trudge through this mess, and I'd like to try and like like grapple and uh, like contain his arms, so that way he can't uh, whip and like pull any potions or concoctions or any extras from around out and try and like just like bind him all right sounds like you're trying to rely on your skills and training roll with focus oh i love focus oh i love me some focus ooh, ooh. that is um a nine plus three for twelve you wrap around him. He's like, ah, uh, grabbing him as he just breaks out of it. You then re uh, reapply uh, um, the constriction, but with your own arms and body as he is no longer able to move. Uh, uh, he can't even move his hands to continue the bending. I'm going to hold him. Come on, it's fun getting a little dirty. Let's tussle on this mud. All right. Uh, Vern, seeing the opportunity, would like to try to throw the pebble right at the guy's forehead again. <laughs> now that he's kind of bound and not able to defend himself as well. <laughs> okay, all right. Uh, go ahead and roll me in uh, with focus, please. All right. <laughs> okay, that is a six, two threes, but I get plus one to focus, so a seven total. Okay, okay. So you go ahead and strike him right in the head with it, and he goes, ah, as you're hit. Um, he comes back and just using... <laughs> sounds super disgusting. <laughs> uh, using his water bending, he goes out and just spits at you, t turning the water into like, <laughs> <laughs> a small like spear that like wow. strikes you as well, hitting you hard uh, and like pressure point. Uh, I'm gonna Ooh, say take uh, one. He's playing dirty too. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Vern. Vern's tried acupuncture and he didn't like it the first time. He hates it just as much this time. With a spit needle? Yeah, I would too. <laughs> That's an awesome move, though. Wow. <laughs> I mean, waterbenders can turn their sweat into scissors, so. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, oh, man. All right. Wow. Okay. Um, How, Rose? Is there anything you wish to do? Uh, well. I'm assuming the, the kids have gotten out, so I can just turn to assist uh, them. Uh, I probably just try an attack of my own uh, directly at him. Uh, maybe uh, try a, I don't know, a, uh, another stone pillar to see if I can just sort of. Oh, know, start the pillar. Down. I could start it. Start down. the pillars. We yes. could start the pillars now. It could be the time. I think I'll try to do a stone pillar at him. See what I can do with it. All right. Go ahead and roll with focus. All right, I'll just have it come like straight down from the ceiling, basically. Uh, seven, and then that's with focus, which is plus two, so nine. Cool. If I could, I'd love to use my patience. So you wait until the perfect moment to act. I mark yes. one fatigue, and I get to use an attack technique. I can mark a second fatigue 
to let Coda use an additional attack technique and then so that we could start yeah. the triple pillar. Uh, but oh. this would put me, if I do both of these, it would put me at five <laughs> fatigue. Does that knock me out? No, remember, it's all of your, it will bring you into the conditions now and you'll start oh, marking okay. them. Sounds good. So if that's all right, I'll mark both fatigues for both of us to be able to use a pillar. Let's all right. It. So anything else that needs a fatigue, you can no longer use. So if okay. it says mark one fatigue, you are unable to. Sounds good. For the first time, you see Vern just exerting himself. There's no muscles that come out. He's still skin and bones, but he goes, Rah! and as he kind of bolsters uh, Coda, and then he himself uses another uh, rock pillar, he's going to try to help with the triple pillar combo, the triangle. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <man>. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> And now the third is Coda. You have the ability to do something right now. You're grappling on him, so it's our choice on how you complete this. I would love to take this action in this moment to say to him, you have been defeated. And with this, you go from impaired to trapped to doomed. And in <laughs> like, the, like the scene where... Um, uh, you know when uh, Katara was fighting uh, Zuko's sister and she calls the water up in yes. Vlad? So I'm going to use the mud to form this pillar and back out, like like step wow. and cause the earth to sort of entomb and encase us. And then I'm going to like pull myself out of it and create the third <laughs> pillar that dooms him. Boom. <laughs> There it is. I love it, love it, love it. Uh, you jump back as the doof doof, and you step back and fly back as the pillar, as the uh, the mud hardens into rock and crushes him as he is just trapped and being crushed by each of these earthen pillars. Oh uh, no, no! Uh, and then the pillars kind of crush, push him down into the ground, uh, pierce, breaking the ground itself as he is just <laughs> embedded into the earth. Uh, that's cool. There it is. <laughs> with, I'll like yeah. smack my hand down, and with this, your fate is sealed. <laughs> nice. The you look back and you see he's no longer there. The kids are like they have made their way. Um, some of them like they they're in the safe, but they haven't made their way all the way out. They're kind of they're children, so they're peeking and seeing how things are going. Mm -hmm. As one of them goes, is is he gone? Did you stop him? Vern goes, no, I'm still here. <laughs> oh, and he hobbles forward and he threw his back out with that last move. Oh, like, oh, Vern. Yeah. <laughs> it is done. Children, stay. Be careful. We don't know where any, any more enemies lie. But this... This Kato has been subdued. And as you say that... There is a rumble in the ground. The, the, or you look out the window and you can see the water shaking as um, you just start to see water start to pool out of the uh, ground where you had smashed them into. And all of a sudden, just battered and bruised, just stepping on a geyser of water. Kato standing there. You, yeah, I've had enough. I will crush you all. And as he does, he starts to destroy the building as just the ocean itself seems to be under his control, showing his prowess in waterbending. Wow. An arching wave is starting to make its way up and fill up as you look and see that yourselves about to be crushed by this water. All the children just step forward in front of you and say, no. And the waterbender, the earthbender, the firebender, and the airbending child, all of them combine their abilities using the different elements around there because they're prodigies. They are talented as they make this one gigantic elemental orb that dispersed oh. the water, traps him into an air bubble that freezes over with the water. Uh, before being um, um, before hardening with the fire bending and then like and using their abilities uh, and he's like Aah! oh shoot good job from this full glass orb <laughs> oh my yeah. goodness that's awesome wow. and they all kind of fall over just tired yeah. now you have done over. <laughs> you have done enough Vern was... thanks them profusely he's like whew Right. should have been saving us. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Good thing he kept them all in one place. 
<laughs> you are an inspiration to the future generations. Mm -hmm. Use these powers for good, kids. Yeah. Ooh. Thank you. He had his trap that we couldn't use our bending at all. It was like we were in the spirit realm inside of them. And Vern nods. I've heard about this before. 12 cc's of brick. That's the solution. Thank you. So, shall we wrap things up with the conclusion? <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. <laughs> we'll say did, that... Oh, go ahead. Did Cora know where this place was, or she didn't know? She didn't know, but I was going to say, do, um, after she returned to the, uh, to the area, <laughs> spoke with the waterbender and the firebender who let them know the plan... Uh, as you're consoling the kids, she comes into the door with the police. Is everyone all right? <laughs> uh, Vern hobbles forward. Well, I hurt my back. How did you find us? We were sneaking. Well, we we talk with uh, 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 one of the Kato's henchmen, uh, a waterbender and a, and an earthbender. They uh, they said that you guys they led you guys here. We wanted to make sure you were fine, but and they look over at Kato. I see that uh, that you handled yourself pretty nicely. Good job, well, you three. He would have gotten away with it if it weren't for those rascal kids. If it wasn't for those kids. <laughs> <laughs> uh. I will um, pull out the notebook, and I'll say, "Here's all the proof you need," and I'll toss it to one of the like deputies, and it's the Cato's journal. You go ahead and then uh, Bei Fong uh, catches it herself just to read it. Hm. Yep, everything we need. Book them, boys. As they're walking over and just kind of roll the, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the sphere out here. <laughs> Use their, like, their, their, their uh, whips to just right. like, pull it. Just slowly get it to, yeah. <laughs> <sighs> So with that being said, the day is saved and the spirit realm, uh, uh, the spirit world has been saved due to the acts of the three earth bending earth benders, uh, who have once again become heroes that Kor knew that they were, and that is where you hear the doom 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 doom. The credits roll up. The ending credits. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. This was oh, awesome. Team Porcelain. Yes. Team Porcelain. <laughs> Team <Yeah>. Porcelain. <laughs> we did it. That was great. That was so awesome. Yes. Very Thank cool. you so much for running this. No yeah, problem. Absolutely. Such a great time. Uh, before we head off, why don't we do what we always do here at Taylor Twenties, where we do something called Stars and Social Stars and Wishes. Yeah, I'll call on each one of you. You give your socials if you have any you want to share, and uh, well. You can give wish if you want, because there's no uh, sec there's no uh, next session. But any yeah. the stars on people um, on who gave you the ooh ah ahs, the life, everything, and you can give it to as many people as you want as well, quoting mm -hmm. uh, what they done. So let's start off with our very own Travis. Your socials and any stars you wish to give out. All right, yes, Travis here, otherwise known as Zendark, your local resident enchanter on uh, here, at uh, Tale of D Twenties. And I also was in dark on Blue Sky. I like immediately forgot use the socials. <laughs> uh, on Twitter and X, I am OMG it's Travi, and um, and until that makes you pay, and then I'm out. So catch me on Blue Sky. <laughs> it's in dark, <laughs> and I would like to give um, my first star. I wrote a note here um, to you, Sam, and it was for that moment when you were describing. Um, standing up and as you were rocking and then you're like, as I rock, I ripple the ground. And I just like had that like, you know, like Naruto moment where like the, the scene fades black and a drop of water hits the ripple and then you see the ripples come out and I could just feel it. And it literally gave me shivers and I felt that moment. That was the start yeah, of our battle. Such a good moment. That was great. Oh, I'm uh, so glad. <laughs> I love that. Um, my other star um, is for you, Pete, was absolutely fantastic. I think um, you, even though we had, uh, you didn't get to actually be successful. I feel like the failure or like me turning you away in that moment was still really cool. And we got to like have that a little bit of discourse, and it was yeah. great knowing that I could like rely on you as like my bulwark and my like <laughs> shield. So right. um, thank you for doing that. And uh, 
stars to you, Omar, too, for running this game. This was so much fun. It was so fantastic. And like uh, specifically star for you for letting us sort of bend the rules and get extra abilities and do cool, cool stuff. Because I felt like we played uh, an awesome game and had told a great story. Mm -hmm. And uh, double, triple, quadruple props to you for letting us use our three pillar technique. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That was, Absolutely. we planned that and I didn't know what was going to happen. And like, you got, we got to do it on the boss. Like how awesome yeah. is that? Like, so thank you so much for that. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And I wanted to, um, <laughs> I was like, I wanted to end with the, the children doing something cool. That way they're not useless. They, I mean, they're supposed to be powerful. <laughs> but I was we, like, we, we describe them as progeny. So like, yeah. I'm, I'm about <laughs> it. Uh, but right. great job. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and next we'll go up to Halro, Pete, um, your socials, if you have any you wish to give and your stars. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, socials are uh, Kai Moon, uh, Raccoon on uh, Twitch and uh, Kai Kono on uh, X or Twitter. And uh, Blue Sky as well should be Kai Moon. So um, you look for me on there. And uh, stars just go out to everybody here for making this such a great experience and uh, for having so much fun. The, the repartee between the three of us as a team and uh, handling everything that well. Yeah, for sure. We got, um, we, we just had so many uh, great moments. It was such a great time. And I wasn't knowing what to expect uh, with this game, but I was really more than pleasantly surprised. So uh, it really just goes to everybody. Awesome, yeah, awesome. Yeah. So glad you had a great time. And certainly, uh, last but certainly not least, Sam, if you have any socials you wish to give, or, um, and your star, or anything else you wish to uh, uh, let the people know. Yeah, I'm Sam Hove. Uh, you can find my name on various uh, different games that I've run, but I don't really uh, hop into much social media. So I do my best to uh, have that free time for others. But uh, for this game specifically, I really enjoyed uh, Pete, you initiating that column. I'd totally forgotten about that when we had first brought it up. <laughs> and the fact that you were like, okay, let's go team and brought That's that fine. in. That was yeah. so good. <laughs> yeah, thank uh, you. And then, but Coda, your descriptions of getting like into that almost carnal fight where you're like, okay, I go down and I run and pull the ground as I move forward. <laughs> Absolutely loved it. So the, the, vis like, the visceral imagery was just so good. But uh, speaking of imagery, Omar, thank you so much. Your descriptions of everything, just absolutely beautiful. And it really got me into the gameplay, and I liked that a lot. So this whole thing was just a ton of fun. Awesome, awesome. I'm so glad you had such a good time. Uh, and of course, my name is Omar. You can find me here at Atelier 20s um, on Atelier20s.com or my personal Tailweaver at The Tailweaver, Omar Burgles, The Tailweaver. Just look up Tailweaver and you'll find me on all the social medias. So, with that being said, that's a wrap on tonight's episode of Avatar Legends Korra Era. So, from the first chapter to the last page. Be kind to one another, spread love, and we will see you next time, specifically tomorrow for Passiones. Passions. Passion de las Passiones. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. Porcelain, 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 porcelain.